additions were number 190 Ed Burgess in his type 51 so an addition and Bo Williams in his type 35B in addition into the Porsche class oh and also on page 32 class Z 188 George Diffie a withdrawal so we've lost a few cars but we've gained a couple as well then into the Porsche Club stuff and page 33 for all of that the Porsche National Hill uh, Championship 138 Paul Howes actually changes to class C3 so if he can score Midland points he will be running in class C3 earlier in the program and uh, also in the, then in the Porsche speed uh, 141 Chris Wigmore and uh, Kathy Wigmore 141941 two drivers one car the Porsche came and withdrawn and here endeth the lesson as they say, right, we're underway with the first car of the afternoon. It's Richard Plogue, car number 20. Let's have a look at Richard in our programme. He is not registered for the Midland Championship. That's a Renault Twingo, followed up by somebody who is registered for the Championship, which is uh, David Garnett, number 21. Approaching the finish is Richard Bloke. He's almost there. And he registered at the time of 58.71. Next along is David Wilson, number 22. So, change of car. This is the Peugeot. This is not the Peugeot that they ran before. Uh, that one uh, uh, broke terminally sometime last year was replaced by the Honda Civic, now they're back in the car that they understand best. This uh, little Peugeot 205, the, from about 15, 20 years ago, this was the starting car of choice in hill climbing. These days it's perhaps one of these Mazda MX-5s, that's driven here by Ben Fisher, or possibly uh, a Renault Clio. Various year models of which are available for different amounts of money. So David Garnett posted a time of 53.18. Dave Wilson approaches the finish. You'll see the car out in the hands of his son, Robin, a little while. Dave Wilson, 53.41. He's registered for the Midland Hill Climb Championship. So these potentially qualify for our uh, uh, top 10 challenge, top 12 runoff a little bit later and the second one at the end of the day. Although it's unlikely that road going cars will survive that long, depending on the weather, of course. So Ben Fisher finished with a time of 54.38. Moving on to Stephen Davy next. Peter Milloy is approaching us. That's Peter Milloy in the very, uh, well, French blue, I guess. Number 25, uh, Renault Clio 182. This, these are pretty much the cars of choice these days if you're getting started in road going under two litre hill climbing, which is the place to go. You can pay as much for your race suit, helmet, boots, gloves, and all the other safety equipment, belts, and so on, as you can for the rest of the car. Uh, we've seen Stephen Davey climb with a time of 51.09, but uh, don't forget he's actually running in class A2. He's running in numerical order, but because the car is turbocharged, he's running in the over 2 litres. That's a finally 1.4 factor. So at the moment we've got David Garnett leading the way in class A1. His co-driver Ian Richards still to run. Usually a good battle between those two with David Wilson second quickest at the moment and Pete Malloy is over the finish as well with Renault Clio in 54.83 so he moves into fourth place in the class but at the moment it's Garnet from Wilson Terry Cox in the Austin Mini Ritz is over the line as well 58 Seven four for Terry Cox, and on the hill now, Phil Stader about to cross the line with that uh, unusual car for hill climbing, the uh, Hillman Minx. Which uh, you might be able to tell us a bit about this car, Eddie. I don't really know too much about that, but I know about the prototypes, the original Arrow prototypes, of which there were two rear engine and one front engine. They all ended up in the uh, the legendary tunnel, as they called it, at Longbridge of all places. 
Heaven knows why uh, the BL predecessors chose to buy them, but they did. We've just seen David Warner. He should be near the finish. He's uh, always competitive. First season out in this Clio for him. He replaces an earlier. Very successful car. Well, time for the Minx of Phil Stader, 55.84. And Dave Warner, in fact, is over the line with the 53 three five puts him right up into second place but it's david garnet that still leads the class with the clio yeah david's sometime photographer here at prescott as well of course number 33 on the hill now is uh, bob penrose uh, bob penrose known to us from the past as a single seater driver and class sponsor over uh, the Sc scania dealership in cardiff of course Silurian scania We've also had uh, Tony Adams, who is second overall in the Leaders' Championship, and he scored a time of 50.74 in the Midland Championship. 50.74 to um, lead the class. Here's a former Midland winner on the hill. That's number 37, Roy Stanley in the Mitsubishi Evo. And a former record holder as well uh, in this class at uh, Prescott. We've still got some double-driven cars to come in A1, but at the moment it's Tony Adams from David Garnett and Dave Warner. But uh, Roy, uh, Bob Penrose returning to hill climbing, in fact, at Chelsea Walsh a couple of weeks ago. Fiona Rogers tra absolutely laying a trail of tyre smoke out of Pardon. And Roy Stanley's time with the BMW Mini Cooper S, 46.57, which... Uh, uh, sorry, that's Roy Stanley's time, 46.57. Here's the massively experienced Dave Parr on the hill in his Ford Sierra Cosworth. He's been competing since the late 1960s. Bob Penrose's time actually 58.05. He ran all sorts of things, uh, Dave Parr. Ford Anglia he started out in. Number 40 now, John Maycock. Master MX-5. Fiona Rogers at the top in 51.18. And no sign of Andrew Koshu quite certain. But uh, Dave Parr with the uh, evergreen Sierra Cosworth. Stops the clocks on 51.32. Here's Tom Twemlow. One of the few people I've ever met who's driven Durris Hill Climb up in Scotland when he was quite a bit younger than he is now. Doris is sort of Aberdeenshire somewhere. Uh, it's the road to a TV transmitter match. And it's not really usable anymore, sadly. So it's Roy Stanley in the lead of the class with 46.57, but John Maycock had just crossed the line. He'd gone right up into second place with the Master MX-5 on a 49.69. Tom Mogirossi now, number 720. This is the dual driven Twingo, we saw Richard Plough driving earlier. So that's back briefly to Class A1 to see the remaining double drivers. Thomas Twemlow meanwhile, 50.62, puts him up into third place in the class led by Roy Stanley from John Maycock. Here's uh, Rob Wilson, always goes well Rob, regular class winner. The car we saw his dad driving right at the beginning of runs. But this is a new car to them, recently acquired. This is an earlier sort of metallic blue Peugeot 205 that uh, uh, bought the farm, as they say, as another venue. So briefly back to Class A1 and Tom Mogirossi, 60.90 in the Renault Twingo. And we've got Rob Wilson chairing the car with his father David, who we saw earlier on. Uh, driving that Peugeot 205 GTI, he's over the line, 53.57. We saw John Davis go past us, the uh, black Caterham HPC with Vauxhall engine. Timothy, Tim Higgins now, Tim the taxi from Osra Street, proprietor of a local taxi firm up there. The only person ever called him Timothy is his mother, uh, so we know him as Tim. And uh, former Malik driver, very small steering wheel on this car, bright orange gloves. You can't miss him working away at the wheel, Tim Higgins. John Davies time in the Caterham Vauxhall, 50.80. And the time for 
Tim Higgins is coming up now. He's just about to cross the line. He's followed by Peter Lethbridge, final runner in this class. Tim Dogwell, I think, a non-starter in the BW Sirocco. But uh, Tim Higgins, 50.26, takes the class lead. Joe Mackerel going past us in the immaculate little Austin Healy Sprite, the frog eye with the, uh, I think that's, uh, I'm not sure whose hard top that is, the one with the air ducting built into it. It's a absolutely immaculate 1960 car. Ian Sargent up next, number 51 in the Opal Tigra. So this is the uh, first of the modified series of production classes, class C1 up to 1400cc. Joe Mackerel just about to cross the line, Ian Sargent, long time campaigner on the hills. Yeah, these Opals only, only ever sold, never badged as a Vauxhall, Every, uh, this particular model only ever sold as an Opal. But Joe Mackerel, 53.08. Time for Ian Sargent, about to appear. Andy Russell with that uh, Genetrin G15, which he's been driving for over 25 years on, on the hills. It's up in the 30s now, apparently. Is it up yeah. into the 30s yeah. now? 35 <laughs> or thereabouts. 35 now, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you blink and it adds another year. Yeah. <laughs> Even he doesn't know, really. It's well, be over, well over 30. And uh, Ian Sargent's time, 54.89 with the Tigra. And uh, Paul Jones next, and uh, this is the Lotus. Paul, uh, uh, well, he's a single runner in Class C2. This is a 2006 exige, but it looks just like a new one. It's absolutely immaculate condition. Paul competes all around the Midlands and other parts of the UK as well. Paul Jones running on his own in the Lotus Exige in Class C2, and he's about to cross the line. Meanwhile, we've got time for Andrew Russell, 49.45. Now we move on to cart number 59. This is Andy Fraser, so we moved on to class C3. These are the over two litre, the unlimited, if you like, modified series production cars. This Aston Martin Vantage built for a circuit series and uh, shared with uh, co-owner Tim Painter, who you'll see in a little while. Then Jeff Lancaster. Jeff will be with us any moment now. Here's Jeff now in the Clio and uh, to the 172 Cup. The reason it fits into this category is because it is a turbocharged car, so a two litre engine. Multiply that by 1.4 and you get the representative capacity. So it drives it over two litres and uh, uh, yeah, Jeff, out of Arden Heaven. I'm getting right through the halfway now. As we look out for Nigel Elliott in the thoroughly daft Triumph TR7 V8 because it's got all that torque, all that power and it's turbocharged as well so very short wheelbase car, it's almost, uh, car's almost the track is almost as wide as the wheelbase so they change direction very quickly and sometimes uh, unpredictably shall we say so first of the runners in class C3 Andy Fraser with the big V8 Aston Martin Vantage 48.29 and Jeff Lancaster in the Cleo Cup, 66.90. So we're waiting for Nigel Elliott to cross the line now. So that's 12 qualifiers. Seen. So they're beginning to fall off the back of the queue of cars wanting to qualify. Here's five times Midland Hill Climb champion Mike Turpin in the Vauxhall VX220. All but uh, built by Lotus. For Vauxhall, uh, with a Vauxhall engine in and Vauxhall styling, but uh, the core of the car is uh, and Exige. Mike supported in the paddock today by his son. He scored 100 yesterday in a cricket match over in Herefordshire for Garnons. Graham 
Manton. Secretary of the Aglian District Light Car Club these days, of course. Uh, Graham in the Little Fish of Fury. Yeah, recently elected to become Secretary, Martin Silcox has moved on to become Chairman of that club. Nigel Elliott, meanwhile, 49.07. And uh, five times Midland Hill Climb Champion Mike Turpin, 46. Oh. Does that lead the class? Uh, no, because that change, Paul Howells, who's currently fourth overall in the middle of the championship, has just climbed in the Porsche 911 RSR in 44.69 to lead the class at this stage. Still got to see Tim Painter. And here's Joy Hoyle in the Westfield SEI with supercharged Suzuki. And that's class D along with Graham Manton. So we've got a very hotly contested class coming up now. Class D. And that's Mason likely to be the one who stars who will be dual driving that uh, Westfield with Joy Hoyle. Joy's having a year of guesting with Ash in this car, who recently retired from Bentley Motor Cars. To the man who looked after their uh, archive and uh, uh, historic cars, and he's still going to be doing that going forward. Jerry Neary, our retired uh, dental surgeon from uh, over in Leicestershire, here's Jerry in the little Caterham Honda that used to belong to the uh, Kenrick father and son team. So, this car took two Midland Championship wins in the hands of previous owner Robert Kenrick. <laughs> So at the moment then in the modified specialist production class, class D, that's Joy Hoyle leads with the 43-47. John Bradshaw is second currently on 44-41. And Graham Manton is third on 51-49. Time for Jerry Neary in the Caterham Honda. That puts him Conveniently fourth, 52.19. Next, Ray Law in his uh, Caterham Super Sport. Where's he gone? I've lost him. Oh, he's through the finish. That's why, 46.49 for Ray Law. Our Oxford Don. So we're still looking out for the Aston Martin Vantage of Tim Painter, the only car left to run in class uh, C3. Simon Jenks now on the hill, always competitive in that class D. He's going to be there or thereabouts, regularly is. And it's a bit of a case of ping pong often between him and uh, Ash Mason in this class with a couple of the others throwing their hat into the ring as and when they can. Well, uh, Ash Mason wasn't here yesterday, but Simon Jenks was and he won the class, coming back after a problematic first run. Here's Steve Garner, he's another front runner in this uh, Class D. Westfield SEI, that one with a Vauxhall XE engine under the bonnet. So Class D at the moment led by Joy Hoyle in uh, Ash Mason's Westfield Suzuki, but no longer because Simon Jenks clocks the 43.22 to dive into the lead. Yeah, always one of the most competitive classes, not massive entry list in it but always highly highly competitive and it's not over till the last runner usually and Steve Garner 43-6-2 as we dive back to class C1 1400 modified series production cars and Pat Cooper sharing the Healy Sprite with Joe Mackerel stops the he's, a, well, he's about to stop the clocks in fact and uh, he's followed by Richard Fry, so we're now we're diving forward again. Richard Fry running as the first car in Class F for Sports Lever and Hill Climb Super Sports cars. Don't see enough of these Hill Climb Super Sports cars these days, do we, Jerry? No, this was a very was, successful one in the past. It course. was. One's very um, uh, successful, particularly in the hands of uh, subsequent Hill Climb champions such as uh, David Grace. This car originally run by. Uh, Simon and Brian Moyes. Simon Moyes driving a little bit later on with the um, uh, Gould GR59. Time for Pat Cooper going back to Class C1. Uh, 
Derek Kessel in the Maguire Mini Cooper S. So it's a space frame fabricated car. It looks like a Mini, but there's not usually much Mini left in them, apart from the engine, of course. All sorts of weird classes for Minis in circuit racing. There's 16 valve classes, rear wheel drive classes, you name it. Next up, David Strange in the Crossleet 9S. Looking for all the world like a 1960s car, but actually a continuation car built by Crossleys over in Northern Ireland in 1999. Looking for all the world as if it was built in 1968. So the time for Richard Fry in the 25-27 Mallet, 46-62. <coughs> Derek Kessel in the Space Frame Maguire Cooper S, 47-59. And looking for David Strange now with that Crossley uh, 9S. But Martin Watts always very quick in this class with the nimble little Silver Riot Yamaha, just one litre. He would perhaps be tipped to set the pace, which at the moment is uh, set by Richard Fry on that 46.62. But David Strange over the line with the Crossley 51.77. And we did see uh, Martin Watts in the Silver Riot, so the little mid-engined kit car, Yamaha 1000cc R1 engine in the back, very quick car, built back in 2008, registered for the Midland Championship, and now here comes that uh, Aston Martin Vantage GT4 of Tim Painter. So Martin Watts in fact, 45.55, takes the class lead in the small sports lever class. Tim Painter will complete class C3. That's the over two litre production class, which is led by Paul Howells in the Porsche on 44.69. Don't think he's going to be able to attack that, but um, his co-driver Andy Fraser set a 48.29. He'll certainly be gunning for that, which could give him third place with Mike Turvin second place at the moment. And he's 46.76. So he does in fact move into third place, Tim Painter, 46. Seven, six. Uh, we just saw Becky Manton go for Rebecca, she's cool, but we call her Becky. Goes past us in the Fisher Fury, she shares with her father Graham. And now is Ash Mason, who will complete Class D. So in about 30 seconds time or less, we will know exactly who's taken, taken the lead in the first set of class runs. At the moment, it's Simon Jenks on 43-2-2. But uh, Ash Mason's also a motorcycle engine uh, car but it's a supercharged this one very quick Becky Manton meanwhile 54.71 bear in mind also from a class scoring point of view they are the two separate classrooms are two separate scoring rounds and uh, you score nine for a win one extra point if you break the class record and you're declining down through six four three two one points and, and less if you've got a smaller class Ash Mason takes a class lead 41 Seven seven, just uh, fifteen hundredths of a second uh, outside uh, Andrew Griffith's class record. There goes uh, Jeff Twemlow in the Seiko GT, the uh, uh, now retired pasty farmer from Cornwall. He told me to say that, by the way. He told me to say that. Yeah, they they grow them under plastic these days, so they come out of the ground uh, all ready to ready to serve, apparently. His field of spaghetti trees are... Yeah, they, are, they, they, yeah well, they, they caught some disease, yeah. 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 So Jeff Turnlow's time in the Soka, 55.39. Graham Lokes next, number 166. This is the unusual, the low, well, he's almost at the finish, the Lola Porsche, so Lola Sports 2000 chassis with a, a Porsche flat six in the, in the back. And it's a 46.42 for Graham Lokes to uh, lead the class. First single seater of the afternoon coming along now. This is uh, Gavin McLaren in the Nut San Muffin. A little bit more about that. Nut San. Nut is Nuttall, as in Phil Nuttall. San Brian Sanders. Uh, they were the guys that built it. And it's called a muffin because the first special they had was the crumpet. So you then had the muffin and then finally the scone. Not scone, the scone, spelled S-K-O-N. Special builders to the world they were. Fuzzy not all, because he used to be a copper. And so did Brian. They, were in, they still work in the radio rooms occasionally. And uh, next along, who have we got? Ah, Richard Walker. 
uh, man who even install you a, a tennis court if you want on to cast ten tennis court if that is what moves you along and uh, Richard uh, one of the 600 cc runners uh, Les Buck who we will also see in a moment is trying to sort of resurrect 600 cc cars which is shrunken sadly over the years he's got that 23 takers i think is at the moment unfortunately they're not all out on the hills yet no they some of them are still in a pile of bits in a shed aren't they <laughs> here's Les. this is Les. look he's uh, and you too you told me he's, he's had a yes he's a, got an some, expense that's had him reeling he's got some new tires on the car today yes yeah he almost fainted when he was well, the others were about bell. four years old i think so they were past their sell by date but Gavin McLaren's time 50.61 Richard Walker though goes into the lead of the cast 46.55 at this stage we still wait to see what Les Buck can do and the nut Sam Muffin by the way is actually built as a um, an extraction jig to train marshals to remove uh, drivers from cars so it was a space frame chassis mounted on axle stands and so on and then one day Phil not all said to Brian Sanders, do you know what? We should put an engine in this and make it into a car. And there it is. Oh, well, Liz Buck just fails to catch Richard Walker. 46 6 6. So uh, he goes second. Richard Walker leads at the break. Best of two runs, of course. We'll be seeing all these cars again. So with uh, Clive Austin on the hill yeah, and over finished, the line, yeah. in fact, 40.8. Yeah. Two. That means we're into the 1100cc single-seater class. Jim Spencer now uh, from Crew, occasionally seen with his uh, his brother Dave sharing the car. This is the the home-brewed Reynard with its uh, their own engine installation in the back that uh, makes the Kawasaki engine a stressed member by using some CNC machined aluminium components. The billet engine mounts, I think, is the way to describe that. And uh, following Jim Spencer, it's Ian Davis with the OMS Suzuki. So Jim Spencer should be somewhere near. In fact, he's over the line, 40.71 to take the class lead from Clive Austin in the Empire Wraith. But the man to look out for in this class is, of course, Robert Kenrick, the ultra-successful methanol fuel BMW-powered GWR Raptor, which leads the... Um, Midland Hill Climb Championship and in fact his second equal uh, in the top 10 challenge which we'll see two runs for a little bit later on. Uh, Ian Davis meanwhile 46 8 for Darren Gumbly on the hill. Yeah the white, that's the white single seater who's now into the S's. Darren another one of the uh, Team Valley mob. And we'll forgive him for that. He erects a very good shed as well apparently. And uh, Martin Jones his mate who lives just along the lane. Martin in this uh, earlier force has some similar styling features to the later force T8. This is the force PT built by uh, Bill Chaplin, whereas the later model forces are built by Ian Dyson. And the T8 being very successful, was introduced at the beginning of last year. Here's Robert Kenrick. Darren Gumby's time in the T8, 40.8. 6 and 7 to take the class lead from Jim Spencer. Don't blink, this won't take long. Yes, with Robert Kendrick on the hill now. Also, incidentally, is the current holder of the Prescott Gold Cup, which he's uh, leading at the moment in the chase for this year's um, award. But Martin Jones over the line, 41 5 7, goes into fourth place for that time. But we're looking for sub 40s now for Robert Kendrick. Possibly the first sub-40, official sub-40 of the day. He was uh, sub-40 in practice and it's 37.50 for Kendrick. So that's currently fastest time of the day, 37.50. You should have more of those Matthew Humphreys design watches than anybody in existence, isn't it? This way? He probably has. Oh, and a bit wide and into the dirt for uh, uh, Ben Malik. Has he got out? No, he's, he's beached the car, so red flags. We have to stop for a few moments while he is extracted. So Ben Malak, his name is Malak, and the car is a Malak, but he's not uh, not a close relative of. Uh, he is a distant, but not a close relative of the Malak car building family. So uh, I'd made the unsafe assumption that he was a cousin of uh, Ray Malak, but apparently he's not. So the class that Ben Malak is is. Uh, Running in is um, 
led by Martin Watts, 45.55 in the Silver Riot from Richard Fry. And in third place at the moment is Derek Kessel. Oh, and the, uh, uh, the cherry picker, which is the correct phrase, I believe, for one of these, is on the hill, Tonka Toys, the uh, colloquial. Yeah, we're joined by um, uh, a regular Goodwood commentator, Chris Druitt, who used to compete, of course, over a period of, well, several years, many. 40 years, yeah, you started out your career in a Fraser Nash at Goodwood when Goodwood was a proper circuit. Mm. Yeah, they're going to get the, uh, the Malak Malak. I wonder if anybody, yes, yeah, somebody must have said that in the past. Uh, the Malak Malak is going to be recovered. Of course, Richard Fry, who uh, is the lead driver in this, she was the owner of the original Gold GR37, if we go back far enough. So we can just give you uh, an interim um, order for the qualifying at the moment. A lot of cars still to come. We've got, in fact, some 87 cars here, I think, are registered for the Midland Championship, which means they're eligible for the uh, Wind Development's Top 10 Challenge, but only the 12 fastest out of those 87 are eligible to take part in the runoff. And we'll see two of those runoffs after one after each set of class runs but currently fastest overall and top qualifier with a lot of quick cars still to come it's robert kenrick on the 37.50 well clear of the field in the raptor bmw darren gumley is next quickest on 40.67 and it's jim spencer on 40.71 that's the top three then we've got clive austin martin jones ash mason uh, and we've obviously got well over 12 um, people have set time so far, but 12th qualifier at this stage is Mike Turpin on 46.30. But I think we're going to be looking like for, for something in the 40, 41 second bracket uh, to uh, finally make the cut. But a lot of runners still to come. But Robert Kendrick currently fastest on 37.50. But other people we would certainly expect to uh, to get in are Sean Gould with that uh, brand new for this season Gould Judd with the uh, Judd KV, uh, rather the uh, Judd DB4 engine in, uh, with which uh, the GR59J, with which he uh, won outright at uh, Dune Hill Climb, the British Championship event last weekend, and also won both runoffs. Uh, another man to look out for would be um, Pete Tatham, perhaps, in the uh, OMS uh, 25. He was going well in practice. He was second fastest overall yesterday in the supercharged machine. Uh, but the FCD man uh, yesterday was, in fact, Matthew Ryder with the four Suzuki PT. He was down in the... Uh, 
39s, as was Pete Tatham. Matthew Ryder, FTD yesterday, he would uh, certainly be uh, a good bet to make the cut for the British runoff. In, in fact, the um, Midland Championship runoff, in fact, he's currently fifth equal in the top 10 challenge series uh, with Zach Zamet, the former Maltese hill climb champion. Both of those here today running in the 1600cc class. So Ben Mallet uh, just coasting back down to the paddock. Former owner of this car, Simon Moyes, is another man likely to uh, make the cut if his uh, Gould Suzuki, the supercharged GR59, is uh, running okay today. So we will be back in action very shortly once Ben Malik has uh, returned to the paddock and we'll be looking out for the final runner in that 1100cc class which is Chris Aspinall sharing the Empire Wraith Suzuki with Clive Austin. Right, back underway, and uh, we've got a Formula Ford, and it's Richard Ames, so uh, that is the correct name. Uh, yeah, we were expected to see Carol Nichols, here's Peter Hawkey as well, so into the Formula Fords. And uh, Formula Ford, what to say about Formula Fords? These are classic Formula Fords. It's, uh, they all run uh, virtually the same tyres, so a control tyre effectively. They have a control engine, not sealed, but certainly blueprinted, and uh, they, they still even have to, they should, and uh, they're scrutineered to have to wear the circuit racing rear view mirrors, even though they, most of them are just hill climbing. And the engine, of course, is the Ford Kent Crossflow. With a 7-Eleven block, if you've, you've got one of those, you're doing block, yeah. well, yeah. And uh, around about 100, probably about 108 brake horsepower, as uh, Eddie said, they can be blueprinted, but you're not allowed to remove metal and uh, it's got to be vir virtually a standard spec engine but very carefully built. Uh, Carol Nichols got a red flag of course for Ben Ma Malloch. Uh, he's offered um, pardon so we're going to see her a little bit later on. We're also looking for his Aspen to finish the 1100cc class but meanwhile Richard Ames with the Van Diemen RF88 British sprinter of note, 57.30 for him in the Formula 4 class. And uh, Peter Hawkey in the Raynard 89 Formula 4, that's uh, 51.26. But leading the way so far in the class on a 50.25 is Richard Weaver. Here comes Steve Aspinall with Steve Day on the hill with the Swift SC92. Pitching out for Chris. He's uh, had a bit of a late start to the season, but he's with us now. And uh, 
So I was down his job at Gaiden uh, JLR, a, a product engineer over there, team leader in fact. So he's chasing Robert Kendrick, 37.50. I don't think he's quite going to catch him, but he could go uh, second on the head of the uh, 40.67 of Darren Gumbly. And he does, it's another 39. 39.06 for Chris Aspinall. That puts him second fastest qualifier at this stage, as well as uh, second in the class. That's the 1100cc single-seater class. So Steve Day's time with the uh, ex Simon Macbeth Formula Ford Swift is uh, 49.24. Charlie Riley has already gone past us. This Paul Morecambe in the oldest car in class, but uh, uh, quite possibly the quickest. Uh, we saw Charlie Riley, who is the winner in the smaller version of this class yesterday. And in fact, Charlie slips ahead of Steve Day by three hundredths of a second to snatch the lead. Paul Morecambe may have something to say about that. May well. And he will be pushing hard as ever. Final runner, Carol Nichols, leaves the line with the night. Carol, of course, daughter of the late Ken Nichols, who produced all the, the wide variety of night race cars. She's in fact uh, documenting their history at the moment. So Paul Morgan's time, 49.34. So that's a pretty close class at the moment. It's led on 49.21 by Charlie Riley. So just three hundredths behind is Steve Day, 49.24. And in third place, a tenth of a second um, behind is, uh, no, Carol Nichols is, give you a time, it's 50 point Coming up now, in fact, Paul Mork at 49.34, that was the time we were looking for. So just a tenth of a second behind Steve Day in third place. And here comes Rob Anscombe. So we're into our um, slightly more modern single seaters, possibly more nimble, aero equipped, aero package equipped cars. So Rob Anscombe is an addition. Uh, number 101, he's an addition to uh, Class J2, 1600cc racing cars. Uh, Tim Dodwell, number 40. Well, we've got uh, Tim Dodwell, we didn't yeah. uh, see the car, but we guess it's in Volkswagen Scirocco. We're going right back to Class B, we didn't yeah. see him earlier, and it's 50. 7-2-0 for Tim Dodson. So back to the 1600 racing cars, it's Caroline Ryder. You'll see the car out in the, the hands of uh, her son in a few minutes time. And who took best time of the day yesterday. Uh, that would be, it might be a different, that's Matt Ryder. It might be a bit different today. You've got Dave Warburton and Zach Zamet who are really quick peddlers in the 1600 class and doing very well in the British Championship too and in the leaders. Rob Anscombe then 45.55 in the 1600cc class which is exactly the same as Martin Watt's 12th qualifying time at the moment but we suspect they're going to drop off the end very shortly. Here's uh, one of the senior uh, racers in hill climbing, Alan Warburton, the man who uh, accompanied his co-driven with any number of champions, David Grace who won five British titles, Martin Groves who won four British titles, Paul Ames who has won two leaders titles, so uh, he shared with all of those and now he's got his son going quicker than he is these days, so the son now going quicker than the father and looking to emulate all of those previous shared drivers who did so well. Caroline Ryder finished in a 40.53, Rob Anscombe 45.55, Alan Warburton approaching the finish now, we're on to 104, Steve Morgan. So Caroline Ryder goes third quickest at the moment, and Alan Warburton 40.36. Oh, Steve, Steve Morgan onto the grass, half a spin, gets on the throttle too fast and does a 180. So that was... Uh, and a watch by a couple of expert uh, hill climbers down there in uh, Chris Druitt and Sandra Tomlin. I'm sure they could give him advice. <laughs> so no leaders, uh, no Midland points for Steve Morgan then on this round, the first uh, of two sets of class He runs. did manage to avoid beaching it in the kitty litter, of course, which is always a bonus.
But of course, he won't qualify for the opening run. No, he's no, he's going to be annoyed now. That was uh, yeah. he just he was in, in too quick on on the throttle coming out of the Taurus, and uh, when he recovered, he was again far too quick back on the gas uh, with the rear wheels on the grass, spun him round and 180, and there you are. Well, he Afternoon had, over. He had high hopes. Well, first run over. Um, he had high hopes because he was second in class yesterday. To uh, he's going to have a he'll have a chance later on anyway. Oh yes, sir, he will. yeah. He's going to continue on his way towards the top. They probably will post a time, but he's he's had assistance anyway, so uh, that usually uh, means it's a void, void run. So Alan Warburton's uh, 40.36 puts him third fastest qualifier behind Chris Aspinall. And the man who's still quickest overall. Well, it gives his son, this, this gives his son David a few more seconds in which to change over the driver's seat. Oh, stand by your beds. We've got um, uh, Hill Climb Royalty coming up the hill towards the commentary box. Now we're going to get visited by the MAC, so competition secretary. So come on and say hello. And of course, we're going out to the world on a live feed. Uh, thanks to Rich Danby, who spent all these, this amount of time putting in a live feed. I hope we're getting plenty of people. We've had people as far away as, I would like to say, Antarctica. We've never been that quite, quite that far away, but uh, we certainly get people in the Middle East, uh, expatriate hill climb fans who look in. We've had people from South Africa, uh, people from Australia. That's about as far away as you can get. And I think one from New Zealand. Oh yeah, this, this is the inside of a commentary box. So new coals on the hill now coming into the Tories with the uh, OMS Suzuki, the OMS 28, all these OMS cars of course built by uh, Steve Owen up in York these days. Class currently led by Alan Warburton on 40.36. So New Cole just about oh. to stop the clocks, which he does in 40.98. That puts him in third place at this stage. And uh, here's Maltese hot shots that down it in the fabulous little bright orange Empire Wraith going so well in all of our championships this year. The British, the leaders, the Midland. And uh, flies over from Malta. First meeting of the year, he brought eight of his pals with him. So he had two mechanics per wheel. And he scored British Hill Climb points as well. He's currently fifth equal in the uh, top 10 challenge, the uh, Midland Championship, uh, Wind Development's top 10 challenge. Fifth equal with Matt Ryder, who we expected to see next. In fact, he's still changing the car. Uh, over with his uh, mum Caroline. Time for Zach Samit, 38, 5, 8. That is second fastest time of the day so far and a clear class lead for Zach Samit. And it's that uh, famous Gould Delare. In fact, it is GR49, would you believe? Number one, 49 one. So it does have a proper Gould number. Yeah, a lot of modifications by David and Sean Gould to this car. It was driven very successfully by Ben Butterfield back in the uh, early 2000s. He won uh, two consecutive runoffs at um, Doom way back then. Very appropriate because, in fact, Sean Gould did exactly that uh, last weekend at the same venue. He likes it up north. He's, uh, he does. Sean he is does. having won around also at Fintray 25 years yeah. ago. The further ever. north he goes, the faster he gets. 
What happens when he gets to the Orkneys? Yeah, but there isn't a hill climb there at the moment. There might be a sprint sometime. Hill, hill climber is there. Yeah. <laughs> James Brims, hill climber James Brims is actually on the uh, Long Hope lifeboat crew, by the way. Yes. He lives, James Brims lives on the island of Brims, would you believe? Oh, believe it or not, yes. Um, just. <laughs> Moving on, Richard George with the splendid two-litre Chevron FPC. He stopped the clocks on 47.84. He's running in the handicap class for the racing cars. So 47.84 for Richard George. George Bleasdale now in one of the original Pilbeam MP88, still with the uh, QED KV, Rover KV6 in the back and we've got Nicola Dearden so run, the first car running in the normally aspirated 2 litre class she stops the clocks on 48.67 and uh, also Ian Wilson with the Formula Renault in that class 50.45 and it's uh, Bill Morris the evergreen Bill Morris in the Pilby Millington, the MP88, also from the two litre class, 45.69. And George Bleasdale with the uh, Rover KV6 powered Pilby, 44.44. None of those times quick enough to qualify. The cut at the moment is Simon Jenks, 43.22 for the runoff. Lee Griffiths on the hill now in the OMS. 25 Suzuki, who could be a possible candidate for the uh, wind developments runoff. Robert Kenrick leads the way still, 37.50, time to beat to get in. At this stage is Simon Jenks is 43.22, but we rather suspect you're going to be needing 40s to uh, make the cut at least. Lee Griffiths time, 40.88, so that puts him ninth fastest 35 at the moment. Uh, apologies, uh, Lee Griffiths not actually registered, and uh, it's Ian Tucker uh, who is registered. He's over the line in 44.55, so that doesn't qualify. So it's still Simon Jenks 43.22. That uh, uh, is on the number 12 spot. So Mike Trigonning now. He is registered, can he get into maybe the 40-second bracket? He's going to need to, I think, to get in. But no, it's 42.01 for Mike Trigoni. Tim Elmer, though, he'll be looking for a place in the runoff with the uh, Yamaha V8 powered Dallara, the engine built by Terry Davis, just down the road at Cheltenham. Uh, the clock ticks on to 40.92 for Tim Irwin. So that's um, ninth fastest qualifier at the moment. So the cut now is Mason's 41.77. Yeah, here's Josh Moss. The uh, ex George Emerson Delara was blue, painted uh, bright orange these days. Josh getting to grips with this car, he's been in it for this season and a little bit late, uh, late during last season, I believe. So, can he make the cut with this uh, X Piers Thin car? And it's 41.07 for Josh Moss. Well, it does get in, but it's not going to last because that's uh, 11th fastest uh, qualifying slot, so we should. I think we're going back now to uh, Class J2, the 1600cc uh, single-seaters. A couple of cars we've not seen, two very quick ones too, Matt Ryder and Dave Warman and his Matthew Ryder on the hill now. He will be chasing that uh, lead time of Robert Kendrick, 37.50. He did a uh, 39.18 to set FTD at yesterday's meeting. 
not all the Midland Championship contenders were here that uh, yesterday, of course. It was the Porsche day. Very successful too. And we'll be seeing most of those Porsches in action a little bit later on. So Matthew Ryder, 38, 4, 9. Just gets in ahead of uh, Zach Zamet, who said a 38, 5, 8. So 38, 4, 9 to Matt Ryder. But that does lead the class, of course, from Zamet. But with uh, Dave Warburton on the hill now, this could also be a challenge for a top place. Time to breed in the classes then. Matt Ryder's 38 for nine. Second fastest qualifier, so can Dave Warburton do it? He was at Doom last weekend too, scored two ninth places in the British Championship runoff in this uh, X Work School GR59. And it's 38 five nine for Dave Warburton. Just a tenth slower than Matt Ryder and one hundredth slower than Zach Zamet. So it's close at full third and fourth place in the cup for the runoff of the stage. 38. 5 9 for David Warburton. So that means that the class led by Matt Ryder from Zamet from Warburton. As we move into the fourth induction. 1600 class and Pete Tatham, the man who finished a very close second FTD here yesterday, he'll also be looking to go sub 40. In fact, the first five qualifiers are now sub 40. So it's uh, certainly going to be a 40 second run that um, is going to be required to qualify. And it's a 38 from Pete Tatham, 38 9 5, which is fifth fastest qualifying place. So the cut now is Tim Elmer's 40.92. So 40 is certainly required. Possibly even 39s, because the top six now are in the 39s. Just 12 get in and the only 10 score in the runoff itself.
Back in action again with uh, Andy Coley with the uh, V6 Cosworth Power GR55. We're into the big single seater class. No sign of Kelvin Broad or Simon Moyes, who certainly Simon had a few problems, I think, in practice. But we did see Kelvin Broad. At the moment, Pete Tatham, the only runner in class K2 for forced induction cars. But Andy Coley looking for a place in the Wind Development's runoff, which is going to set the first time in Class L for over two litre single seaters. It's 38.94, hundredth of a second quicker than Pete Tatham, puts in fifth fastest qualifier. Next on the hill is Bernard Cavill, bringing in the OMS 28, TKDV8 in the back through Torres. Any moment now. New car right at the end of last season for Bernie Kevill and Simon Andrews. And OMS 28, one of Terry Davis's, in fact, his original motorcycle based V8. This is the Suzuki version, the SV8, 2.6 litre. He's at the uh, semicircle and heading towards the finish. And Bernie Kevill posts a time of 40.66. 40.66. And that time is just a hundredth of a second quicker than Darren Gumbel is. So that uh, puts him tenth fastest qualifying slot. So the cut now is uh, Jim Spencer's 40.71. Here's Lindsay Summers in the family's sweet little DJ Firestorm with the cost of KFP6 in the back. It's uh, Mum's turn in the car today, this weekend. And this is the car that currently sits second in her son Alex's hands in the British Championship. And uh, Lindsay now, of course, the, uh, she's the competition secretary of the Hagley and District Light Car Club who run Lowton Park Hill Climb too. Probably tell from the exhaust note, this, uh, the same engine, or similar engine to that run by Andy Coley a couple of cars ago, that Cosmos K6. Here we go, Sean Gould. It's 42.92 for Richard Summers, doesn't qualify, but here's Sean Gould. This could be a challenge for fastest time of the day, which is currently held by Robert Kenrick on 37.50. Brand new car for this season, Sean Gould got his first success with the car at Dune Hill Climb last weekend with two wins and FTD. And he is registered for the Midland Championship. Uh, only scores one point at the moment, but uh, if he keeps up his current form, he uh, could make serious inroads into that series. 37.94, so not quite as quick as Robert Kenry. So the one litre BMW bike engine car leads the way still. 37.94, that's as opposed to um, 670 horsepower of Judd V8. So now it's Amanda George. So we're back with the Class M1 Sports Racing and Sports Racing Handicap. Led on scratch by Father Richard at the moment, 47.84. This car has taken the best time of the day at the uh, famous Brighton Speed Trials on the on the seafront down at Brighton every September, or nearly every September, has missed a couple in recent years. World's oldest motor sport events. In fact, Amanda George, the uh, Brighton ladies record holder in the Pilbeam MP62 many years ago. And it's 47 3 1 for Amanda George. 
So back to the two litre class now, and it's uh, Andrew Henson. We should see some quick times still to come in this class. Can Andrew Henson make the cut? He's going to need possibly a 39 to do so. Henson leading the class with that run, it's 40.65. That's uh, the moment, 11th fastest qualifying place. Again, very close, 100% clear on Bernie Kevill. But will they last the pace with some more big single seats to come? James Wilson next on the hill. We're back for two litres. James Wilson with the Formula Renault. Might be a hard press to get yeah, into yeah. the runoff. And Tim Davis, well, this could be a quick run too from the Welshman in the Pilbeam Millington MP88, which he shares with uh, Bill Morris. But it looks as though forces are going to be required. Immediately it's Bernie Kevill's 40.66, which uh, leads the way. James Wilson, 46.92. Looking for the time from Tim Davis. Phil Fisher's Malak now. Again, that's back to that. Class uh, M1, yeah. Two, class M1, and Tim Davis, 40 seconds exactly. So that is ninth fastest qualifying place. That might just squeeze in. 40 seconds dead for Tim Davis, which means the class is led by him from Andrew Henson and Lee Griffiths in third place. And now here's Jeremy Rivers Fletcher in the Triumph Special. Lots of Coventry built Triumph components in the back. The back end kicks out going around Barden. He manages to control it. Next along, Brian is Serrell, number 176. So we are in this uh, short class of two in the M2 racing cars manufactured up to 1971. Target time of 42.25 in this class. So Phil Fisher finished in the 48.36 in the Mallet. Next along is Stuart Ridge. Well, he's in class M and uh, he, he actually is quite capable of getting in a runoff in this car on a good day. And did do it the Midland Championship round at Shells at the beginning of the uh, beginning of their season. And uh, it's quite recently that Class N can actually get into a runoff and classes, anything before Class F as well. Normally it was F onwards only that uh, could qualify for a runoff. Uh, we you don't see any handicaps on the screen, unfortunately, so uh, we can only give you the scratch times. Stuart Ridge, 40.39. So, uh, by my reckoning, he's actually qualified. Stuart Ridge is registered, yeah, yeah. So 40.39 is 11th fastest qualifier at the moment. Really? Okay. I thought I'd done one. So back with the big single seaters and uh, Mark Coley. is next on the hill. So this is back to the over two litre single seater class, currently led by Sean Gould on 37.94 with second fastest time of the day. Mark Coley's brother Andy is currently sixth fastest qualifier, so he's certainly gonna get in. Seen Richard Brown yet, unfortunately. Now, another potential qualifier, Simon Andrews, number 964. So, the time for Mark Coley 3880. 
so Simon Andrews on the hill sharing this uh, V8. So Stuart Ridge, Bernie Kevill, is the uh, last qualifier. Right now on a 40.39, so uh, he may he may have been in the top 12 for about two minutes. The way things are looking. And Andy Coley posting so, that at uh, that time. Simon Andrews, 40.31, that just creeps in in 11th place at the moment. And we've got uh, Richard Summers on the hill now with the DJ Firehall V6. Another registered competitor. And uh, the first of our Porsches is on the hill now. That's uh, David Hilton, a shared car. No, we haven't had any sign of any uh, of the Tomlin clan. Are we scratched or are we running? Scratched by the looks of it, yeah. So we've got that time of 40.27 for Richard Summers, which means that he just makes the cut and uh, out. <coughs> So the, the drivers missing that we've not seen this afternoon and we're way past their classes are Kelvin Broad and Simon Moyes. Uh, we think Simon was having trouble earlier, but we uh, didn't see any sign of that from Kelvin Broad. But we don't have them, they're potential qualifiers. So we've had several times now from the uh, Porsche Club GB National Hill Climb Championship, which is now led by David Hilton, 47.38. And Simon Tarling, 49.91 to uh, go second at the moment in the class. Ross McDonald, 51 seconds exactly. And uh, company in fifth place is Richard York, 55.75. So now Robert Lancaster Gay has just crossed the line, 49.08. So here's the man who leads the National Hill Climb Championship, David Dyson, in the blue uh, Porsche GT3, uh, followed by Christian Ayres, who is. Uh, one of the quickest uh, road going cars certainly was yesterday. Dyson's time 47.49. And Christian Ayres trying to maintain that position as fastest road going car this weekend in the Hill Climb Championship. Stop the clocks on 47.84. So not as quick as Championship leader Dyson. And uh, so that means David Hilton still leads the class with David Dyson. The Christian is now in third place as we move on to the modified section of the class. Duncan Andrews with the Porsche Cayman. Uh, their task a little bit easier as Paul Howells has uh, moved to the uh, two, over two litre road going um, modified class to score points in the Midland Championship. So he won't be scoring points in the Hill Climb Championship uh, today. But Duncan Andrews, 46.89. That is the new class leader. Now Phil Price, 
is next to uh, cross the line. He's just rounding semicircle now in the turbocharged 930 RS and 48.65 for Phil Price. That puts him uh, up to uh, fifth in class, but it's Duncan Andrews who still leads. Peter Turnbull now, a lot of class wins under his belt as well with this 911 GT3 Cup. Time he's got to beat though is Duncan Andrews, 46.89 currently. Two cars left to run in the Hill Climb Championship section. Uh, we're going to see Tim Barber a little bit later on because he's sharing the car with uh, David Hilton, the GT3, double driving it, so we'll be seeing him a little later. But Peter Turnbull's time, 46.89, which is exactly the same time as class leader Duncan Andrews. So there is a tie for the lead in the Porsche Club GB National Hill Climb Championship class. Both Duncan Andrews and Peter Turnbull on 46.89 to lead the way from uh, David Hilton on 47.38. And we'll be seeing Hilton's co-driver Tim Barber very shortly. So now we move on to the Porsche Club Speed Championship, different championship to the, the Hill Climb one. This involves uh, sprints as well as Hill Climb. And uh, before we see that, we're going to see Laura Wardle, who's actually running in the Porsche Club Invitation class. Just two runners, one car, so that's why Laura Wardle's running a bit early with the 911 Carrera, which she shared with Jonathan Williamson for the past 35 years. She stops the clocks on 50.53 in the Invitation class. So now it's back to the Speed Championship class and uh, Ian Wadsworth in the 911 running in class P3 which is um, up to 280 brake horsepower. These uh, four divisions in this uh, championship depending on uh, brake horsepower output and this is the second most powerful of the four in class P3 and Ian Wadsworth is there in 50.26 meanwhile we've had Tim Barber complete the Hill Climb Championship class with a 48.51. So not in the top three with that time. So is that time good enough to lick the class from Martin Leach now, who's uh, just stopped the clocks on 50.66. And uh, next up, it's gonna be uh, Stephen Joy. We've got three cars on here at once now. Unusual for Prescott, but Stephen Joy just finished his run, 50.06. And that goes into the class lead ahead of Ian Wadsworth. Big backfire from the exhaust of Durant Evans's car. Number 146, who's just coming up into Pardon now. Wayne Eason, though, in front of him, in just rounding semicircle with the Porsche Boxster. And he's there in 53.04, fourth place in class at the moment. So here's Graham Rose now with the 924S. Had a few problems of late. I think he had an off at Lowton Eddie and uh, he did investigate the outfield at semicircle yesterday. Yes, yeah, he's uh, <laughs> developed a little bit of a reputation amongst his uh, classmates uh, of late, so he needs to behave himself. Otherwise it'll be uh, a detention <laughs> in the corner. I shall not go off at Lowton Park and so on to be written on the blackboard. Well, just uh, meanwhile, uh, Wayne Easton set a 53.04. Going on to Evans, 52.68 to go four. And Graham Rose is over the line, 52.01. That's good enough for fourth place. Justin May, they're coming into Ettore's. And the S. And Howard Cressy precedes him in the Porsche Cayman. 
56.10 for Cressy. And uh, Justin Mather almost at the finish line, followed by Michael Brown with the Porsche 944. Passing the halfway point now. Justin May this time, 48 9 4, clear class lead. I think this is going to be between Justin Mather and Andy Fagan. Well, we've got a time coming for Andy Fagan, but not showing a start line time, so don't know if something's gone wrong here. Ah, we've got an elapsed time. Though. Yeah, he's disappeared, oh, so he's I think he probably again. broke the beams and. Uh, there may be, he may come back later on. 52.61 meanwhile for Michael Brown. As Andy Fagan's a habitual and uh, serial class winner, of course. And leads the uh, Porsche Club's pre-championship overall. Back won his class at uh, Park two weeks ago. Uh, he's away from the line now. Yeah, he must have... Uh, Good launch, 2.34, quicker than anybody else in the class yeah. at the moment. And uh, not as quick through the speed trap as Justin Mather on 69, but it's uh, Mather who leads. Yeah. So the, the time that Fagan's chasing is um, Justin Mather's 48.94. So Fagan's up through the left-hander at Pardon Hill, and he's past the halfway, he's heading into the S's now, up to that uh, final left-hander. Now we can see Carl Lepton, number 153, down at the bottom. Coming out of Vittoria's right now, safe, safe line, keeping him away from the kitty litter, keeping him away from the ag trap of ag soft aggregate. And uh, a little bit late on the ga gas, I think he was in the wrong gear at the uh, pardon. Sounded like it. Peter Taylor is next on the hill in the box to S. But Andy Fagan's over the line and it's 48.87, so he snatches the lead in the class from Justin Mather. And now it's David Dyson on the hill. He's actually running in two championships, both the hill climb and the speed championship. And certainly coming to Prescott uh, yesterday, he led the hill climb championship. Carl Lupton, meanwhile, 51-2-2. And Peter Taylor, 51.50. Nick Wadsworth next along, has left the start. Most of the time through the bridge, so here he is out of Orchard and running into that tight right-hander here at Torres. Keeps out of the kitty litter. Always the best thing to do, heads up towards Pardon. On the brakes, very, very tight line around the inside on that concrete strip. Accelerates harder way past Jackie's gateway and through the halfway and into the S's. But meanwhile, David Dyson has stolen the march on the rest of the class with a 47. 4706 is the new class lead for David Dyson. Pushes Andy Fagan down to second and Justin Mather to third. Nick was with the final runner in the class. He's not going to beat that time. It's 50.43. Jonathan Williamson on the hill, the Irish born Cornish Wiltshire. Uh, sorry, uh, Somerset resident. There's a mixture for you. Moved up towards, moved up to the Taunton area a few years ago. 35 years, as Jerry has said, with uh, uh, Laura Wardle in this car. And Jonathan Williamson, 48.98, which means he takes the win from his co-driver.
So uh, we're going to give you the running order. Do you want to do it, Jerry, or shall I? I'll do it if you like, Eddie. Okay, thanks. Over to Jerry then. <coughs> uh, well, the running order for round 11 of the Wind Development Top 10 Challenge, uh, according to our calculations and what we have on the computer screen, is as follows. If you'd like to turn to page 35 in your programs, you'll find a grid which you can fill in the runners and riders. But uh, first to run will be 163 Andy Coley, 964 Simon Andrews, 965 Richard Summers, 911 Tim Davis, 786 Chris Aspinall, 121 Pete Tatham, 963 Mark Coley, 903 David Warburton, 106 Zach Zamet 902 Matthew Ryder 192 Sean Gould and finally last to run top qualifier number 8 Robert Kenry and right on cue it's Andy Coley on the hill now Qualified in ninth place with a 38.94 in this B6 goal. Yeah, this is uh, one of the uh, earlier of the Gould GR 55s. The Coley brothers have had this car since new, back in 2006. So Andy Coley tips the car through the S's and at of that last little, almost a straight into the long right-hander of semicircle where you can see nothing but sky on the run-in and he does a 39.71 to set the mark in this first runoff to this afternoon. Well, we'll uh, try and give you the uh, speed trap times and uh, the uh, perhaps the most important um, interim time, the split time, to the halfway point, halfway between the pardon between Pardon and S's, and it was 24.82 for Andy Coley, which gives us a good benchmark, but 39.71, first time of the 12. Next up is going to be Simon Andrews, number 964, who qualified in 12th place with the uh, bike engine, or bike-based engine, in the back of the OMS 28, the Terry Davis built engine, Suzuki SV8, 40.31 was his 12th qualifying time. 12th place. Of course, Andy, uh, Mark Coley will be due up in the car we saw Andy in in six cars' time, so there should be time for a rapid changeover. Car coming to the line now, this will be Simon Andrews, who qualified on a 40.31. In fact, he was the he was the last qualifying position. Andy, Andy Coley was quite well up there. He was uh, uh, one spot behind his brother, between uh, his brother and Pete Tatham in the qualifying order. Simon Andrews leads the line, 2.04 launch. We we'll check that track speed under the bridge, 92 miles an hour, one mile an hour faster than Andy Coley. So into the very tricky Itoris, which drops off the camber. Starting up into Barden Airpin, we're going to look for the split time. And 0 0.08 quicker than uh, Andy Coley to Itoris. 24.83, just a hundredth of a second slower than Coley to the split. 0.24 quicker to pardon. So looking good for Simon Andrews to set a quicker time than Andy Coley and we'll keep watching those clocks and they stop. No, it's a 40.24, so it slid away from him 
towards the end. So he was slower to midway, so uh, he lost time after midway. Richard Summers is next, 11th fastest qualifier on 40.2784 miles an hour through the track. And Richard Summers, Eddie Torres. His time there is 12.31, so slower than both the first two runners at that point. So time's slipping away from him, Jerry. We'll see what happens at the midway point. Yes, 25.33, a uh, quarter of a second, half a second or so adrift. And he's at the approach to semicircle now. Richard Summers through the finish. 39.83, so he made up a little bit of time, but he's just a touch slower than Andy Coley. So that's second place for Richard Summers. Now we're looking out for Tim Davis, who qualified 10th on exactly 40 seconds with the Pillbeam MP88 with uh, 2 litre Millington power. Tim Davis has been uh, hill climbing um, since. Noah was a lad as one of our and uh, yeah famous that's right and commentators was a Jaguar apprentice at Browns Lane in the mid 50s was he his, his dad so, his dad was a Jaguar dealer so he saw the fire there 89 miles an hour I so believe he did yes so did I by the way and I was only four oh, right. oh yeah I lit up the whole of the country it yeah. did <laughs> so uh, well we'll just check that uh, halfway split time for Tim Davis 24.82 is the quickest so far and it's 25-1-3, so that's third quickest of the split. So it's still Andy Coley that leads on 39-7-1, but uh, that's a um, three and a half lead, uh, two and a half lead to be six, and Tim Davis is just a two litre straight four with the mini turn, and it's 40.03, that's third place for Tim Davis. Yeah, the uh, slowest runner at this stage, Simon Andrews, unfortunately for Simon. And next up will be Chris Aspinall, or should be Chris Aspinall. Just the top ten runners score points from uh, ten down to one. And 11th and 12th scores. It is indeed Chris Aspinall, Jerry, here he comes with the Empire Race and it's 88 miles an hour for Chris Aspinall through yeah, the speed see what he does at Itoris, the median speed is about 12 and a quarter and uh, it comes 12.41 so slowest at that point sadly so he's going to be perhaps a 25 at the midpoint yes 25.35 for Chris Aspinall So he's on course for something like third. He's into semi. Place. 39.35. Well, how wrong can we be? Mm. That, he must have made up a lot of time at the end of the run. That's actually second place now. I think the car's pretty nimble um, through the S's, isn't it? In fact, it's first place. Apologies. Mm. 39.35. Tremendous. Uh, yeah, we don't have any other well, splits right. after the midway, do we? I'm sure that it's, he made it all up through the S's, I'm sure. Through the S's, yes, tremendous. Mind you, he was, uh, he's noted for that. You remember his amazing performances in a Jedi? Uh, yeah, which, yeah. Uh, he used to make so good was he that he ended up in the Land Rover in-house magazine. Because I made sure he got in there. Oh, no. <laughs> Here's Pete Tatham now, the man who finished second FTD narrowly yesterday. To that who we'll see in a few moments. And 102 miles an hour. And he slithers off and his back end is in the kitty litter at Itores. He was a bit wobbly coming out of Orchard. The back end skipped out on that little, by that little triangle of grass by the old crossover course. And it didn't look too good. And uh, a bit too early into the gas, couldn't control it. 90 degrees onto the track. Uh, I'm not sure how our uh, uh, online cameras pick up. There's, there's one somewhere. Uh, on the inside of the folly, uh, so it's probably quite some distance from the camera to the car. Plans maybe later in the year to get, uh, when Richard does it again, to get somebody with a, a moving camera on a tripod down there at Itour, as it might happen. It would be good if we could do that. 
So uh, that'll be an afternoon of frustration for Pete. They've now got the, uh, the issue of getting the car, which is quite well buried into uh, the kitty litter. It's only just in there. But I think, are they sending for the, fab the fabled Tonka toy? So just waiting for Pete Tatham's car to be uh, extricated. It's only got a, we can't quite see from here, but it only looks like one, possibly two rear wheels in the... Uh, yeah, it did kick up some dirt tech. when it went in there. Looks like... Uh, so unfortunately no score for Pete Tatham this time around. He's got another chance of course to make the second run off at the end of the meeting. So at the moment it's uh, At the moment, it's Chris Aspinall who leads the runoff on 39.35, with Andy Coley second, 39.71, then close behind on 39.83 in third place is Richard Summers. Well, if you can't see uh, the other from other parts of the hill, uh, Pete Tatum is now out of the gravel trap, driving across the grass so that he drops any bits and pieces uh, from the aggregate onto the grass as far down as he can go. Avoid contaminating the track with all those little ball bearings. They're like Maltesers without the chocolate. It's like a sort of a blown foam of uh, spoil from uh, old-fashioned coal-fired fire stations called Lytag. That's now full. I don't think anybody's making it anymore. So, yeah, he's dropped a few bits and pieces down, but it is very light stuff and it does blow away quite easily. A bit more sweeping to go on that. It won't be very long though, I'm sure. Which gives uh, Andy and Mark Coley plenty of time to change over. And it's Mark Coley who's going to be next up, who qualified the V6 Gould in sixth place with a 38.80. So if he can repeat that, he will lead the run off. Well, we'd expect uh, Mark to be champing at the bit down there. It won't take very long there, guys. Masters are already returning to post at uh, Orchard. Great service from our marshals here at Prescott. All of them volunteers, of course. Uh, they sign on here and they do it all across the Midlands. Many of these are guys who appear both here and at other hill climbs and other sprints during the year. And uh, uh, Van der volunteer sisters and brothers really and we've even got one over here who uh, she she lives on the mainland but uh, her brother is one of the guys who organizes the sand racing uh, uh well, they call it autocross but it's banger racing really on shuay beach over on guernsey so uh, had a little chat with her early i know her brother reasonably well and uh, jerry and i course, wear our sand ace caps or as jerry coined i love this one Remember Liberace, so it's Sandace, is Sandace, isn't it, Jerry? If you say so, Eddie, yes. <laughs> oh, no, it's one that's stuck with me, that has. I, every time I put the cap on, I go, I always think of you telling me that one. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. 
But yeah, so marshals from probably, all over. Probably nobody here remembers Liberace. <laughs> Hopefully, anyone. Anyway. Uh, some of the older <laughs> ones will, like uh, like Chris, he will. <laughs> probably went to some of his concerts. So yes, marshalling. If you fancy getting as close, you can't get any closer to the action than marshalling as hill climbing or, or circuit racing, whatever you choose to do. And uh, so if you fancy a go, if you fancy having a try at this and you've got some time on your hands, have a chat with any of the marshals really, or find uh, Chief Marshal Kevin Cornwall. You can't miss him. He doesn't wear orange these days, but he's got a badge with his name on it. Go and have a chat with him. And uh, we're recruiting always, always recruiting, always people who have to retire to get on a bit older and less, a bit more infirm. So we're always looking to fill from uh, the bottom end, as it were, with some younger people, possibly. Uh, you can't marshal on the hills when you are uh, under 15, but uh, at Loughton Park we certainly have people there who, they, they just end up pushing in the paddock, uh, finished paddock and so on, and they th thoroughly enjoy their day. They work very hard, but they th enjoy being together, a bunch of mates. So uh, have, a, have a think about that. Come and join us. And uh, training is given. You're not just thrown in the deep end. You'd spend a few meetings with an orange tabard on with experienced marshals. There's training takes place every, usually it's the, either the last weekend in February, first weekend in March, at one of the Midlands Hills and they rotate around. I really can't remember where it was. I used to do it, but I can't remember uh, where it was last time. So, but it rotates between here, Lowton Park and Chelsley Walsh throughout uh, a three year period. So just have a chat with people if you fancy a go, because we'd love to see you uh, helping out on the hills. Mark Cody underway. 2.16, exactly the same launch as Pete Tater, but uh, 96 miles an hour through the uh, speed trap. That's the second quickest speed to Pete Tater, is it fun? And the tourist time of 12.09, uh, that's uh, about the third quickest at that point. Yeah, second quickest at that point. Well, the 25 would be useful. It's better than that. It's 24.62 at the split. That's quickest so far, so could Mark Cody take the lead from Chris Aspinall? He's got to beat 39.35. And he does so by four hundredths of a second. 39.31 for Mark Coley leads the way. Yeah, well done to Mark. So uh, we now have just four runners yet to come. Dave Warburton should be next up. Then it'll be a Maltese hot shot, Zach Samet, then... Uh, uh, Matt Ryder, one of our top under 25 drivers. The experienced Sean Gould, who goes quicker than northern most he is. And finally, that multiple three times Midland Hill Climb champion, Robert Kenrick, currently well in the lead. So we've got <laughs> three 1600s, a four litre V8, and a one litre motorcycle engine car to come. How different is hill climbing this year than it was maybe 10 years ago? So David Walton away from the line, 2.07, that's the quickest launch yet, one of the quickest we've seen today in fact, and it's 99 miles an hour through the speed trap. See what he does, Aditores, it's a 11.82, the quickest by far, Aditores. And he's heading towards the halfway now, Jerry. So could it be a 23? Not quite, but 24.26 is the quickest so far. So time to beat 39.31 from Mark Coley. He's into the semi. Should do it easily. Yes, 38.29, a clear lead there for David Warburton. And of course that car is the one in which uh, uh, Sean Gould took his win at, at uh, Dune three years ago. It's the X Works GR59. Oh, and what was the year, number of years gap between his win 20, at Fintry? 20, 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Longest gap between British Hill Climb Championship round wins. Yes, he was a novelty lad when he first did it. <laughs> well, here's Zach Zamet. Another quick man, former Maltese Hill Climb Champion, qualifying 4 39 He's got to go quicker than that, though, if he wants to take the lead, but it's 90 miles an hour through the track. Uh, Zach Zamet gets a time of 12.04, so it's up there in the good numbers at uh, Itoris. So it's got to be a low 24 to midway. Well, it's a longish 24, 24.71. But can he do a 
Chris Aspinall will make it up through the S's. 38.29 now the time to beat. And Zach Samit, 38.74, goes second. It's a good effort from uh, Altee's driver. Loves it over here on the British Hills and the Midland Hills, of course. So now we've got yesterday's FTD man, Matthew Ryder. One with a 40, uh, 39 yesterday, went quicker in qualifying, 38 Four nine, but yet again he's got to find more time because current leader Dave Warburton's two tenths of a second quicker than that in the lead of this runoff. That rider, 1600 cc Hayabusa powered Empire. Yeah, it's an Evo two, the one with the uh, the high nose. Well, the it's got a lower nose, uh, but a high point on it where the. Uh, uh, monoshock at the front suspension sits tightly covered by that nose cone. Instructor Bill Chaplin on hand this weekend. Saw his uh, one of his cars take FTD yesterday. But he's got stiff opposition in uh, Sean Gordon, Clive Ken uh, Robert Kenrick when he's away from the line. 2.06. That's the quickest launch on. It's quicker than Dave Warburton at 93 miles an hour through the track. Yeah, uh, he's going to be through that speed trap on the exit of Vittoria's any moment now. <coughs> and he gets there in a 12.03, so quicker than Zach Zamet. So looking for a low 23 now at the midway split. It's 24.48, second quickest at the moment. That's to Dave Warburton, who currently leads, and his time is 32.38.29. So can Matt Ryder get inside that? Not quite, 38.46 he's got enough for second place then for Matt Ryder. So very tight at the top there, isn't it, Jerry? It certainly is. Could get even tighter now. We've Next. got Sean Gould. This fabulous all carbon Gould GR59 4 litre Judd DB4. So not four cylinder, DB4 means DB4 litres. They are available in slightly smaller capacities that rev higher. Uh, there's one in a Mercedes sports car on the Continental Hill Climbs that sounds fabulous because it's uh, smaller, lighter internal components means it can rev another two or three thousand beyond this one. Well, this one, a potential 670 brake horsepower. Effectively a sports racing car engine. And it's a sub two second launch, 1.95 and 105 miles an hour quickest through the trap so far. Let's see what he can do here at the tour is. Oh, 11.47, quickest by far. Rocketing up into Pardon, and the split is 23, is it? Yes, 23.09, almost a 22. Tremendous run there from Sean Gould. So just the last part of the hill to go now into the blind right-hander at semicircle. Time to beat 38.29 from Dave Warburton. 36.72 for Sean Gould. Uh, what a target that is for Robert Kenrick. Well, that's um, only a second and a quarter away from Josh Goodge's hill record. So, Robert Kenrick now, everything to do with this little one litre BMW pound machine. Yeah, that hill record run was one of those you will never, ever forget. Can he get a 36? It's 2.04, it's a good launch and 100 miles an hour through the track. It'll lack the speed there in comparison with the goal, but it is so nimble. A little bit late on the gas, gas coming out of Victorious. And he registers a time there of 11.57, so a tenth slower than Sean Gould at that point. And it's 23.76. It's a 23, not quite as quick as Gould, but it's one litre as opposed to four litres. Can he keep the gas on around semicircle? 37-3-2, well not the win, but second place, 37-3-2, and uh, that gives him 59 points in total, and the lead at this stage in the Wind Development's Top 10 Challenge. He's gone ahead of Wallace Mingus and Scott Moran, who are not here today, of course. We'll just uh, check Zach Zamit's uh, position. He was fifth at the uh, end. 
which is uh, going to be six points. So that gives him 48 points, and uh, that moves him up in two. Third, fourth place overall in the series, just ahead of Alex Summers, who again, of course, is not here today. And there's another runoff to come. Sorry, for. Oh, a quick uh, recalculation by. Uh, Pete Curtis on my right, of course Matt Ryder, we've forgotten about him, he's doing well, he's fifth equal with Zamet, and in fact he finished uh, just ahead of him, so that gives him an extra point, and that's 49 points. Well look at this, we're back underway already, and we've got uh, number 20, Richard Plogue, dual driven car, this uh, little uh, uh, Renault Twingo, so, the latest Twingo, of course, is a rear engine one based around the same platform that makes the uh, Smart 4 4 4, isn't it? Yeah, the four seater one. So this is based around the Twingo mechanicals and uh, gets to the top, Richard Plough. Well, he's almost there. And uh, gets there in a time of 58.49. Uh, 58.49. David Garnett next along, number 21. Registered for the Midland Championship, so wanting to score points in this class. Let's go and have a look at the, uh, the class as it stands at this point after that first set of runs earlier on. Now here's uh, Dave Wilson, former Midland Hill Climb champion the Moran sponsored Caterham a few years ago. Widish, fairly wide line around Harden Hairpin. So uh, David Garnett, 53.55. Dave Wilson heading up towards the finish now. Here's Ben Fisher in the Mazda. And into Pardon, and away. Now, the Honda Civic of Stephen Davey. This is uh, 2017 model. It's got a half cage in it. Suspension, brakes, interior, electronics and engine are all standard type R, uh, fancy graphics, graphics on it and uh, uh, standard, standard continental road tyres on it too, so uh, just the Dream Automotive half cage, the change to this car. And Ben Fisher finished on a 54.57, in case we missed Dave Wilson that was a 53.11. Stephen Davey in the Honda finishes in a 51.54. Mm. Mm. Just his position. Well, Tony Adams still leading on 50.74. That's going to take some bettering by almost anybody in this class, and we'll see him shortly and now uh, here's uh, we saw Peter Mellow go past in the Mazda MX-5 here's Terry Cox number 26 in the Austin Mini Ritz he's not registered for the Midland nor are the following two runners before we see Dave Warner who most definitely is Cox heading up towards the finish in the mini. Here's Philip St Phil Stader. Phil driving the 68 Hillman Minx. Competition equipped. It's equipped rather like a rally car, really, I guess. And uh, it's the uh, 
These cars went on in production in Iran of all places for many, many years as the Paykan, which is the Farsi language for the word arrow. And arrow was the code name of these cars when in the development phase, of course. Developed in Coventry at the Stoke Works and at Wrighton. And there's the funny thing, everybody says Wrighton plant Coventry. No, it's not, it's in Warwickshire. In fact, it's a couple of miles outside the city boundary. And that's where Jaguar's current uh, heritage and uh, special vehicle operations site is. There's Dave Warner, speeding through the halfway now. Phil Stader recorded a 55.86. Dave Warner is looking for something a little better than his earlier time of 53.35. And here's Tony Adams, the class leader. He's just about got the class in the bag, I think, with that uh, 50.74 earlier, Dave Warner. Gets himself into second place with that 52.76 that he's just posted. Just then uh, Rob Wilson to see uh, when his dad uh, vacates the driving seat. It's now Bob Penrose moving on a class. So Tony Adams finishes in a 51.91. So a uh, bit, bit slower than before, a little under a second slower. But he did it all on that first run, superb run. Bob Penrose now, number 33, former single-seater driver, uh, former class sponsor, of course, with his Silurian Scania firm a few years ago, truck leadership from Cardiff. But nice to see Bob out on the hills again this season in this thoroughly modern Mini. Now, another former Midland champion here, here's Roy Stanley. He'll go missing for a year or two, then come back and pick up winning where he did, where he did before. This, uh, this Evo has been around uh, for quite a few years now. It's, uh, it's an Evo 5, uh, but to, uh, they're up to Evo 10 now, aren't they? So Roy Stanley heading towards the fifth. Bob Penrose finished in a 57.31. Now looking out for Roy Stanley. Here's Fiona Rogers. Now look to her smoking tyres as she gets out of uh, Pardon. It's down to the way the drivetrain is set up, we think. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there you go. Not quite as much as before, but uh, spinning that left-hand rear. So uh, maybe the, uh, the cross diffs but set up needs looking at on that car. Electronically switchable, of course, on one of those. Dave Carr next, a man who's been on the hill since well, the late 60s. And uh, Dave Carr in that uh, classic whale tail for Sierra Cosworth. And uh, this is the, the standard one, the RS500 was the even hotter one, which were, they were all built by uh, uh, Tickford, Aston Martin Tickford in Bedworth, on the north between Coventry and Treacletown and Eton. That's where the Tickford Capris were built as well, if you remember those. Those were quite a desirable car too. But we don't see any of those hill climbing. We do see a few of these Sierras. And the Cosy gets to the top in 51.49. Never crashed, only raced and rallied. V Rogers finished in a 52 seconds precisely. Roy Stanley, well, he was really quick away from the start. That's better than a two second start. Did a 46.89. Now here's Tom Twemlow. As I said to you earlier, the only person I've met, well, in recent years, who ever competed at Durris Hill Climb, because at the time their family was living up near Dundee. And uh, Durris was a the access road to a great big TV mast. Uh, four or five miles out of Aberdeen, not very far from uh, Graham White Jr.'s headquarters across the hill, really. But not, not usable these days, surface is broken up, and there are too many trees. Probably making a good special stage for when the RSC rally begins to go north of the border again. Next to 
along. Here is Rob Wilson. So sharing the car with his former Midland champion, Dad, Dave. Rob, often a front runner in this class. They've only just acquired this Peugeot. Did have a pale blue Peugeot before, but it, uh, uh, it met a sad end somewhere else. And uh, they've been running that on. He's been running that Honda Civic for about a year. Now we're out in this little Peugeot, which will probably suit his driving style a bit better. Next along, here comes John Davis, number 45. So we're skipping along to uh, class B, the road going specialist production car. So no capacity brakes in this class at all. It's uh, anything from sort of 750 turbo up to, you know, four litre Westfield. Did we see Tim Dodwell? We saw him late earlier, but uh, so John Davis heading towards the finish. Now, uh, uh, Tim Higgins, regular in this particular class. He's from the Oswald Street area, proprietor of a local taxi firm up there. So you know to call if you need one. So I'll just drop by the office for a coffee if you're in car almost, almost any time. You'll probably not thank me for saying that. And uh, Tim Higgins, oh, John Davies got to the top in a 51.45. Rob Wilson did a 52.21. We'll get a time for Tim Higgins any moment now. Yeah, it's a 49.24. Tim Higgins. Just uh, Peter Lethbridge, who is up there. He's got through the halfway. Here's Joe Mackerel. Joe in the Austin Hedy Mark 1 Sprite. See the car out again a little bit later in the hands of co driver Pat Cooper. Seen Pat Cooper driving all sorts of big heelers as well over the years. A little orange sprite, a bit slow back on the gas out of uh, pardon. So now we're into class C1, that's 1400cc modified production cars. And it's Andy Russell that leads the way after the first runs. Joe Mackerel's just uh, climbed in 53.89, he was in second place. And uh, on the hill now it's Ian Sargent with this uh, open Tigra, followed by class leader Andy Russell. The Ginetta MG15. He's been campaigning for 25 to 30 years. The same car, familiar sight on the hills of Britain. Ian Sargent's time 55 5 6. It's, uh, Andy Russell got some value out of that car, I think. I don't think it owes him much now. Here's Paul Jones. Lotus XC is running alone in class C2. He's out of Vitoris, heading down the slope and back up again into that tight and incredibly steep left-hander at Pardon. Well, Andrew Russell doesn't improve his time, but he's still fairly safe at the head of the class in front of Joe Mackerel and uh, Pat Cooper, who has yet to run with the Healy Sprite. So Paul Jones running on his own in the Exige in uh, Class C2 is a 47.26. So he's found some more time. Just waiting for Pat Cooper to complete Class C1, but we're fairly certain it's going to be Andy Russell's class as we move on to C3 now. Andy Fraser and Nigel Elliott on the hill. Fraser with the Aston Martin GT4 Vantage. And the rumbling sound is coming from Nigel Elliott's TR7. It's running a new gearbox at this meeting. Uh, the last of his uh, Borg Warner T5 gave up the ghost at Lotus Park the other week and sounded like Ed Edmundo Ross's Maraca band when it failed. Turpin, five times Midland Hill Climb champion in this Lotus 
Yeah, Vauxhall VX220, but with the most of these chassis. Yeah, it's mainly a leash. The, the, the core of the car is the Lotus Lee. Uh, Paul House, who switched, if you remember, from the Porsche class uh, to a Class C3 for um, in the championship points reasons. He got the maximum on the first runs by leading the class with a 44.69. Got to do is repeat that. Meanwhile, Mike Turpin says a 46.48, and we didn't give you Nigel Elliott's time, which was 48.06. So no sign of Jeff Lancaster at the moment, but Paul Howells 45.35. Not quite as quick, but um, moving. That's enough to lead the class and get the maximum points again. Um, and we've got uh, Graham Manton's car in the kitty litter on the outside of Vittoris. Slid in there under our noses. Quite deep in there. This may take more than the usual push because he's got uh, at least two wheels in there, possibly even a third. Oh, the ignominy. ignominy. Well, the lads are going to have a go at extracting Graham Mountain. He remains at the wheel. Yeah. Right, here comes the uh, well-known Tonka toy provided by our local Massey Ferguson dealer down the road. So a, a front loader, farm loader. Just a job when you're in trouble. There's also going to be, there's also going to be a bit of sweeping, I'll wager. So the front loader in position behind Graham Manton's car, just about to couple up whatever the pulling device is, probably some sort of form of nylon strop is normal. So he's in reverse because the warning beeper comes on. Well, he quickly got uh, Graham Manton out of the light tag, but that's uh, going to take a few minutes to uh, sweep up after him. That'd be a few bits and pieces spilling out from the underside of the car. That would be normal.
And that's where he will be instructed to drive on the grass, as you saw Pete Tatham doing in the first set of class runs earlier on this afternoon. So the uh, massive, massive Fergus from front load is going to return to its place. Graham Manton is coasting back down the hill. Bit of sweeping work going on here. And we've got to say the marshals at Itoris have been very busy today. And uh, they're happy to do so.
One of our senior commentators once put it, we have signs of inactivity on the start line. So that I can hear somebody coming to the start. The, uh, the little bit of mess can created by Graham Manton, who has slunk back to the paddock uh, in disgrace. Uh, and there's a burst of engine, engine sound from whoever it is. We haven't got a start line camera. But we'll let you know the moment the name pops up on the screen. Well, let's take a, a bet on Joy Hoyle. <laughs> That would be a, an SWAG type of guess, wouldn't it? And I'll let, you, let, you, let you research the etymology of that yourselves. I've got it right for a change. Yeah, it is joy oil. Well done, Jerry. Yeah, so uh, sharing the, this car of Ash Mason's this year. Uh, familiar driver in this class in the past, of course. Uh, sharing with others. Dave Wilson, Dave amongst, Wilson others, yes. amongst others. So uh, Joy heading through the halfway now. We're looking for John, John Bradshaw, who's next up, number 67, in the Caterham Blackbird. And he's out of Itouris. And Joy Hoyle, 43.09, which is Four tenths of a second quick in the opening run. Here's Ray. Here's, uh, uh, sorry, Jerry Neary, this is. Uh, Jerry has uh, uh, a Black Westfield and also this uh, Caterham Blackbird. Blackbird as in a Honda Blackbird power unit. Uh, the car in which Robert Kenrick won the first two of his Midland Hill Climb Championships. Last John Bradshaw, 43.95. Jerry Neary heading for the line, followed by Ray Law. And Jerry Neary's time coming up in a couple of seconds. Just entering semicircle. And it's 52.02 for Jerry Neary. Next along Ray Law, who's already gone past us and is through the midway. 29.11 he got when he, when he reached that point. Ray Law, 46.53. Yeah, there's Ray. Now Simon Jenks, always a quick runner in this Class D. Quite capable of winning it on his day. And he was second after the first run, but he's got a couple of seconds to make up over Class leader Ash Mason. And he's out of pardon already. Got to get into the 41s. He was in the 43s earlier. Through the midway. Ah, that might make it interesting. And Simon Jenks, 43, 5, 7. Slower than before. So Steve Garner is now on the hill, followed by Pat Cooper. So that means we can complete Class C1, the 1400 mod pod class. Pat Cooper with the Healy Sprite. Steve Garner's time, 44.60. So cars of all ages welcoming, welcome in hill climbing. Doesn't have to be in a historic or a classic class. Hence the little uh, 1960 Austin Healy Sprite. And now here comes uh, Tim Painter in that uh, superb Aston Martin Vantage GT4. All 4.7 litres and V8 of it. And the time for Pat Cooper, 56 to 6. 
So that class one by Andy Russell. And in second place, it's Joe Mackerel. Oh, the Manton family, Fisher Fury, is up again, this time in the hands of uh, Graham's daughter, Becky. So with a car none, none the worse for its little dive into the kitty litter. And Rebecca heads through the halfway point right now, of the midway as we call it. So Tim Painter's time 50.26, which means that it's uh, Paul Howells who has won the class with a 44.69 on his opening run, but he's also quickest on the second runs as well. So time for Rebecca Manton, 60.86. So it looks as though Ash Mason, despite the fact he's not had a second run, which as it we is. now have a few spots of rain yeah. unfortunately coming down, that's uh, And a bit of sweeping going on as well. So somebody spat some uh, dirt onto the course. Marshall spread out around, for those of you at the bottom who can't see, the marshal spread out around, pardon, from uh, Old Orchard exit up to pardon itself. Didn't see who did that. Probably, probably Becky Manton, I would think.
Now we're back underway, here's Richard Fry in the Malloc. Here he is up towards us at and into Itoris itself, so into the tight right hand hairpin. So this is class F for two litre sports supercar cars and hill climb super sports cars, this being one of the latter. Richard Fry, hill climb just about everything in his time. Drove the uh, original Gould GR37, the first one built by the uh, Gould factory in Newbury. Based on the Royal RT37. And Richard's second in class at the moment after the first runs with the 4662. So we get an idea how the conditions are affecting the hill when we look at the time. Well, that's quite a bit slower. 58 seconds for Richard Fry. Derek Kessel already out of Harden through the midway, followed up very rapidly by Ash Mason, class leader. I think Richard Fry must have been taking it very cautiously or knowing that he couldn't improve his time. So we'll see how, what difference the conditions make to Ash Mason. He, he's already won the class with his first run, 41.77. Derek Kessel sets for 56 one, one well that's some nine seconds slower so it must be pretty damp out there of course still competing for points this afternoon they are indeed this is a separate effectively a separate event for all competitors this afternoon not just two runoffs but uh, two sets of class positions david strange in the crossley 9f that's obviously made a difference then because ash mason uh, nine seconds slower than his first run and um, doesn't leave the class after the second run. That uh, honour, in fact, goes to uh, Joy Hoyle. So she's going to get maximum points. Yeah, she got a dry run, run, didn't she? Yeah, she got the dry, the dry run, yes. Next along, well, David Strange is near the finish. Here's Martin Watts in the silver right, the little uh, mid engine space frame sports car. Yamaha Power. He's uh, going at it a lot more cautiously than we saw earlier on. Just the two cars in his, uh, sorry, five cars in his class. Should then see Ben Malak once uh, he's changed seats with Richard Fry. So Martin Watts led the class after the first runs on the mid 45 he's well over that time now he's into the 54s silence now he's past the minute so perhaps no the clock stops on 60.15 for martin watts jeff twemlo in the uh, running alone in his class uh, sorry running with graham loke so just the two cars in their class G, Sports Libra, over two litres. This Saker, they're built for a uh, foreign race series, worldwide race series that never quite took off. A Dutch manufactured car with the Subaru uh, powertrain, two wheel drive powertrain in the back of the car. Next along the second and final runner in that class G. This is Graham Lokes in the Lola T492 sports car with the Porsche engine in the back. The car has been heavily modified and returned as close as it can to its Porsche 2000 lead route, but still with some of the mods when it was the uh, silhouette bodied uh, uh, saloon car. Perhaps not surprisingly, won the Porsche invitation class yesterday. A lot more competitors yesterday than there were today, but all the others were 911, so the lightweight sports sleeper. Tim Car. Dodwell's Volkswagen Sirocco yeah. now. Jeff Terminal 71.10 seconds. And for Brian Rokes, it's 60.09. Now here's Gavin McLaren in the Nutsand Muffin. Built out of a Ricardo 
recovery training chassis a few years ago. Still in the barn. So this is the 600cc single seizure class led by Richard Walker after the first runs of the Jedi Yamaha. Just 11 hundredths of a second clear of Les Buck's OMS Hornet. Here's Walker now and Gavin McLaren. Stops and clocks on. Right, 57.45. Again, some 11 seconds outside his first run time. So these conditions won't affect the overall class positions. The first runs will be quick, but of course, a separate competition for the uh, Midland Hill Climb Championship based on the single set of runs. So it pays to press on and of course the Midland Hill Championship is qualifying for the second of our two runoffs. Clive Austin now. There's Buck approaching the finish. Here's Clive Austin in the Empire Wraith that shares with Chris Aspinall. Chris was in the runoff, Clive wasn't. Of Prescott, uh, part of Prescott, uh, pardon, but he'll bend. So, time for Gavin McLaren, 57.45, and for Richard Walker, 59.23, but uh, there's Buck, 54.65. Next along, Jim Spencer. He used to share this quite a lot with his brother David, who we've not seen for a couple of seasons now. Pardon. So this is the 1100cc single seater class led by Robert Kenrick on a 3750. He can get to his uh, previous time. And here comes Ian Davis, number 88. Kenrick qualified top for the first runoff, but finished second behind Sean Gould. Ian Davis in the OMS RA. So way back from 1993, this chassis. Not registered for the championship. Not many hill climbs where he comes from over in Ipswich, are they, Jerry? Now Darren Gumbley. Darren registered for the Midland. That's had this car in a few committee runs over the last season or so. And spun off in a few places as well as I recall too. Good old Darren. So Jim Spencer at the moment on the 48-49 leads the second runs, but it looks as though it's going to be all at Henry. Of course that he's going to take the last win from Chris Aspinall and Darren Gumbley. Now on the hill, Gumbley's time 46.53. Well, that's the closest approach to a first run time we've seen since it's time to drizzle. Because uh, his third place and the end of the first run was a 40.67. So, uh, within So we brought Kendrick on the hill. And he's come to a halt. Has he been red flagged? Yes. Yes, yeah, just on the exit of uh, Pardon Hairpin. So, crucially, we, for whatever reason, we can't actually see the car. It's behind the tree, whether that was a spin or... No, he was red flagged. The flag was in front of him. Oh, he was red flagged. Yeah. Ah, so it was in fact Martin Jones Martin who had a problem. No, I mean, Martin finished look, on a 47.62, yeah, he, so he's clear he's of finished. the hell. He's he must have uh, tipped something onto the course. As well, there must be a rerun then for Robert Kenrick. Yeah. Yeah, the flag was in front of him, definitely. If they flagged him when he pulled up beyond him, that's, that's not the correct procedure. 
but they're, they're turning so, him anyway. 47.62, also around about six, six seconds slower than his first run, as was Darren Gumbley. So Robert Kenrick being turned around, as you say, Eddie, and he'll be back. Yeah, for should be, a should be back for a. So it looks. No, as it's so down as a fail. So why did, was the red flag in front of him? Somebody tell me that. It's down as a fail. Unfortunately, whatever. When he stopped, he was behind the tree, so we couldn't see the car. Uh, if that is a fail, that means that he will have no chance of getting into the second runoff, which could yeah. affect his points for the um, Wind Developments Top 10 Challenge. We do have a uh, fail for Robert Kenry come on our computer, but as we couldn't see the car, we gather it just stopped behind the tree out of our sight. For what reason? Yeah, he was quite slow at that point anyway. He was slow at oh, so it. Maybe it's a mechanical problem. Yeah. yeah, we've got Ben Malloch on the hill now just to complete the small sleeper class, two litre small sleepers, class at F. Yeah, Ben is out of Vitoris. Heading along towards Garden. Tight inside line at Pardon and away through the midway. So this class almost certainly won by Martin Watts after his uh, first run of 45.55. As we move into the Formula Fords now, Carol Nichols with the Nike Mark IV into Itores. And Ben Mallet 53 4 0. And a lucky result for him because uh, he had a problem at Pardon, which uh, somewhat compromised his first run. So back with the Formula 4s then, Carol Nichols is followed by Peter Hawkey. So no sign of Richard Ames just yet, Peter Hawkey with the Reynard, the Reynard 89 and Carol Nichols 5715. Richard Weaver now, and uh, son Tom, 16 year old Tom was out in the car yesterday, Richard is driving it today. So as we're moving into the single seater classes, uh, it's uh, a quick look at the qualifying order, shows Joy Hoyle is fastest qualifying for the second at the moment, ahead of Simon Jenks, Steve Garner, Paul Howells in the Porsche and Martin Watts with Mike Turpin. Rounding off the top six, number 12 at the moment is uh, Andy Fraser with the Aston on 49.35. So Peter Hawkey, 54.27. Now here's Chris Aspinall. He may set a qualifying time. Uh, at this stage beat Andy Fraser's Well he went very very quickly around Pardon 
Well, fastest qualifying time so far is Joy Hoyle's 43.09. It looks as though that's uh, going to get... Could well be under threat here. Charlie Riley next to Long in his Formula Ford. And Richard Weaver's time, 53.67. And Steve Day, 52.80. Chris Aspinall place in the wet. Post a 39.46. Uh, leading qualifier now. So yes, leading qualifier, quickest on the first run. Class one on the first runs, of course, by Robert Kenrick, with uh, Chris Aspinall second, in fact. Well, was only uh, 4,500 slower than his first run just now. And in third place, it's Darren Gumbley. So Charlie Riley about to stop the clocks in his Formula 4 Van Diemen. And uh, it's Paul Morecambe, final Formula Ford runner. No sign of Richard Ames with the Van Diemen. We assume that he's not going to be taking the second run. And Charlie Riley, 51.45. Quickest on the second runs. And quickest on the first runs. He's uh, almost certainly got the class. Unless Paul Morecambe can do something amazing. Uh, uh, 49.21, he's not done it, it's 51.50, getting close though, so conditions obviously improving. So we would expect possibly a, a conventional runoff with the faster cars running later and making sure of qualifying. So now it's into the 1600s and Rob Anscombe with the OMS Hornet. Followed by Caroline Ryder in Force Suzuki. And Caroline up with us now. She's into it Torres. Shallow slope. Rapid climb into very, very tight left hander at Pardon Hill. So Rob Anscombe's time 52.67. in the Hornet. Matthew Ryder leads the class with a 38.49, first time up from Zach Zamet and Dave Walker. All three, of course, getting into the runoff. Finishing within the top six. Coming on Ryder's time, 42.45. Here's Alan Warburton now. Car, Anthony's son David in a very few minutes time. So that puts Caroline at the moment into second fastest qualifying place.
Steve Morgan, meanwhile, 44.71 in the V1600cc. Cars, Neil Coles, sets, uh, has not in fact run. So, Sammy. Zamit, 38.56 for Zach Zamit. And uh, Nicola Dearden, we're back with the two litres. That is a 54.21. So Ian Wilson just coming to the end of the run now. 49.43 on his second run. Bill Morris now on the hill, back to the uh, two-litre class. Bill Morris sharing the car uh, with Tim Davis. Tucker's time, 49.53. And uh, Bill Morris, 55.32. None of the times in this class are actually clicking their first one time, but they're all qualifying times, of course. We're just trying to uh, check the uh, qualifying positions, uh, hence the slight delay. Sorry about that, running a little bit behind. And Michael Trigoning, 44.87. And Tim Elmer running uh, in this uh, two litre class still. That's uh, 45.33. So Josh Moss. He's over the line now, 45-1-8. So at the moment after the second runs, it looks as though it's uh, Mike Trigoni who is the quickest so far, but leading the class overall, uh, it's Tim Davis after the first runs. He still has to take his second run. So Matthew Ryder now leaves the line. Matthew, who finished 
in uh, fourth place after the first runoff. Yesterday's FTT man at the Porsche meeting. We're back with the uh, 1600cc class now. Uh, a bit of diving around. He currently leads that class on 3849. So 38.49 was his first run time. He's followed by David Warburton, another man who ran well in the uh, runoff. In fact, he was one place ahead of Ryder at the end. So Matthew Ryder's, Matthew Ryder's time, 38.64. So just waiting for David Warren to finish his run there. No sign of Neil Coles on the second run. It's 38.79 for David Warburton. So it looks as though fastest on the second run is uh, Zach Savage ahead of Matthew Ryder and Dave Warburton. But it's Mark Ryder who takes the class win from Samit and Warburton, all three are going to make the runoff currently there in the top three places. Zach Zamet, fastest qualifier from Matt Ryder with Dave Warburton, third quickest qualifier. Pete Tatham now had a bit of a problem in the uh, first runoff. Pete Tatham with the spin at it all is. But he is uh, the only runner in the uh, fourth induction class. Kelvin Broad, Simon Boys and John Chalmers all non starters and he's over the line with 40.77 which puts him fifth fastest qualifier. still looking for some of the double driven cars in the two litre single seater class. At the moment the number 12 spot is here's Mike Trigoni 4487 on the hill now Kelvin Broad Ah, well, we didn't see Kelvin Broad in the first run, so whatever the problem was, he's got it sorted. So he is out in the second runs. So that means he's chasing Pete Tatham's 38.95, which leads the class. Can he do it in these um, slightly inferior conditions? And it's 41.46 for Kelvin Broad. That is going to be sixth place for Kelvin Broad, 41.46. And now we've got Andrew Henson on the hill. So back to the two litre class. He's followed by James Wilson in the Formula Renault. And Andrew Henson, 42.10 for Andrew Henson. Lotsy just behind Kelvin Broad. So James Wilson is still on the hill. He's followed by Tim Davis into Itoris now with the Pilby Millington. So the situation now is that Steve Garner is on the number 12 spot in qualifying. Jack Zamet leads the way in the uh, 12 car lineup for the final runoff. Robert Kenrick, of course, with a 
some kind of a problem which meant that he didn't actually qualify for the second runoff. So James Wilson, 47-5-0. So to get in now, you've got to beat 44-6-0 from Steve Garner. That's still the number 12. So Tim Davis now 42-0-2. So he slots into seventh place in qualifying. 42-0-2 for Tim Davis. So that means the cut is now Simon Jenks, 43-5-7, but they're still all the uh, large capacity. Finger-seaters still to come, and here's the first of them. Yeah, Andy Coley in the Cosworth KF V6 powered Gould GR55. He's into Vittoris now. Guns it out of Vittoris. Going quite quickly, and he's oh, and he slithers around the inside of Pardon and away, not the approach he would have wanted, I don't think. And uh, he's taking the left turn out of the S's. Backed off a lot there, very late on the gas. He's into the right-hander, that long open Vista right-hander at... And yeah, I thought I could see some red flags. 40.45, Andy Coley. That puts him fifth, fastest qualifier, first of the 40s. So that means Alan Warburton now is on the number 12 spot with 43.19. But still quite a few big single-seaters to come, which could change things. So it's Zach Zamet leading the way from Matt Ryder and Dave Warburton. That's the top three in qualifying at the moment. But uh, we've still got to see uh, Mark Coley, Simon Andrews, both of those qualified for the first runoff, as did uh, Richard Summers and, of course, Sean Gould. Coley, 40.45, to go fifth in qualifying. Here's Bernie Kevill. But uh, nothing coming up on the screen at the moment for Bernie Kevill. Uh, we finally got the time come up for Bernie Kevill. It's 41 8 1. So, eighth fastest qualifying place for Bernie Kevill with that uh, 41 8 1. Now we're looking for Lindsay Summers in the DJ Firestorm with the Cosworth V6.
So we're looking for Lindsay Summers. Next up, we're going to see the car twice uh, in the hands of Lindsay and husband Richard. So by our calculations, there are still five potential runoff contenders to run. Away from the start line goes Richard Summers in the carbon fibre DJ Firestorm. B6 singing away in the back as he jets away from the Tories and up towards Pardon. So he's going to need a possibly going to need a 41 to make uh, the cut. Whereas this morning it was a a 40 so a little slower this afternoon in these damp conditions but Richard Summers heading round semicircle to the finish and it's 42.05 which goes into 10th spot and that eases out Joy Hoyle Caroline Ryder, her 42.45 is now the cut. Zach Zamet still fastest qualifier on Just waiting to see who's going to be next to the line. Stuart Ridge it is, Stuart Ridge. So he could be a potential runoff contender with this uh, almost vintage build being part in P53. Originally built in 1982 for Martin Griffiths. Yeah, he's quicker off the start line than Richard Summers, Bernie Kevill and Andy Coley. Well, since the rules have changed to allow the uh, any middle championship entrant uh, a possibility of getting into the runoff, he could get in. Previously running in the classic class, he wasn't eligible, but this year he is. Yeah, and he did. He did at Chelsea at the beginning of the middle championship season. So Stuart Ridge, 41-8-4. Yeah, that's good enough to get in ninth place. Uh, Stuart Ridge, 41, 8, 4. And Mark Coley away from the start, and he's considerably slower. 2.37 away from the start, same as Richard Summers. So 91 uh, at the bridge. And he goes past the Tories on the 12.64. Yeah, so he's making up the time, I think. And he's away from Pardon and through the midway. Heads into the S's right now. Up around the semicircle goes Andy, uh, sorry, Mark Coley. Saw Andy. Uh, Mark finishes in a 41.34. Seventh, is that? That's yeah, seventh. Uh, seventh qualifying place then for Mark Coley. His brother Andy is currently fifth fastest qualifier, so that now means Andrew Henson drops off the list and it's uh, Richard Summers who is in the number 12 spot. 42.05. So we've still got to see Lindsay Summers, Simon Andrews and Sean Gould. So 
with those three still to run, it looks as though Bernie Cavill will certainly make the cut. Yeah, there are uh, four cars, four drivers behind him. Four cars behind him. Stuart Ridge, Tim Davis, Richard Summers and Mark Kelly. Right away from the start line now, Simon Andrews. So he's got a chance to qualify. 2.13 away from the start, not too bad that one compared with the others. And 91 at the bridge, and he's out of Vittorias now. So Simon Andrews then looking to get in. 42.05 is the time he's got to beat to join his co-driver in the runoff. Phil Fisher now in the Malak. And it's 40.83 for Simon Andrews. Slots him in uh, seventh position. So moving on then to the uh, sports racing cars class. Phil Fisher, no sign of the Georges on the second run with the Chevron Sports Racer. Now here comes uh, Jeremy Rivers Fletcher in the Triumph Special. And he's running in the racing car classic section. So Phil Fisher, 49.60 with the Mallet. Brian Isero coming up to us at the Tories. Tight, tight line on the inside there over the concrete strip. Brian Isero turns into Pardon, gets away. So as we're now into these uh, classic car classes, are we going to see Sean Gould, who uh, should have run in Class L? We should have seen him by now, I would have thought. Maybe Lindsay Summers would be later because of the changeover. But as yet, there is no sign of Sean Gould, which means we may have lost the top two runners in our first run -off. So we can see in the moment. Well, we're into the Porsche classes as Brian Sherrill stops the clocks on 52.62. Come the Porsches. This is Dave Hilton, number 127. And Jeremy Rivers Fletcher set a David Hilton running in the uh, National Hill Climb section of the Porsche Club Championships. And it's 47 to 7 for David Hilton. So that's quicker than his first run time, in fact. And uh, still leaves him in third place. There's a tie for the lead at the moment in this class between Duncan Andrews and Peter Turnbull. Richard York just about to finish his run with the 997 MG3 coming into Toys. Now he's followed by Ross McDonald and Simon Tarling. And Richard York, 55-49. Ross McDonald, 51-7-0. Robert Lancaster going out. Fifty-one-one-seven. Meanwhile, for Simon Tarling. 
Maybe Dawson next on the hill. So David Dawson breaks heavily into coming through the midway now, Dave Dyson. Christian Ayres we're looking for next. He's left the line. He'll be with us any moment now. Coming out of Orchard. David Dyson, 48.52. The championship leader coming to Prescott this weekend. Phil Price now into Torres. Meanwhile, Duncan Andrews is trying to break clear of that first equal place with Peter Turnbull. Christian Air stops the clocks on 52 4.6. And Duncan Andrews, 48.71. Well, we've got Peter Turnbull coming up any second now. Phil Price towards the finish, 46.9. Mm -hmm. Bad news is that uh, Sean Gould isn't going to take his run. He might, cannot start the car, unfortunately. And uh, Lindsay Summers is not going to take hers either, so we'll be able to give you the runoff positions in a few moments, a few minutes time. So Phil Price over the line on 46.90. And that's a good time. You'll be pleased with that. Puts him right up into third place in class. But now we want to see if that, that time for first place between Peter Turnbull and Duncan Andrews can be resolved. So Andrews, 46.89 is the one to beat. And Peter Turnbull, no, he's gone past that. It's 48.92. So it looks as though Duncan Andrews has won the class. It's just um, Tim Barber to run. Uh, but uh, he may be a little slower than those runners. So provisionally, until we've seen Tim Barber, we can't be absolutely certain. It looks like it's Duncan Andrews has won the class from Peter Turnbull and Phil Price finishes in third place. So we still have to see Tim Barber in that class, but we're now moving on to the uh, Speed Championship class to this Petro Canada Lubricants backed Porsche GP series. Ian Wadsworth, 50.90. And uh, it's Martin Leach on the hill next. This class led by David Dyson after the first runs on 47.06 from Andy Fagan and Justin Mather. So Martin Leach now is followed by Stephen Jory in the 944 coming into Itoris. Martin Leach's time is 51.30. And Stephen Jory next up, he's followed by Wayne Eason in the Porsche Boxster. And 
Geraint Evans. Follows Eason. Stephen Jory's over the line in 51 and 2 8. Top three in this class are a little bit farther down the order. It's David Dyson that leads, remember, from Andy Fagan and Justin Mather. Wayne Eason's time, 51.55. And Geraint Evans still motoring. He's going to be followed by Graham Rose, or should be, in the supercharged 924S. Evans' time, 52.80. So here's Graham Rose on the hill now. And he's followed by Howard Cressy with the Porsche Cayman. Time for Graham Rose is still ticking on. Here's Howard Cressy now. And after Cressy, it'll be uh, Justin Mather, who's currently in third place in class with a 4894. Here's the Porsche 924. Graham Rose is time 5265. Justin Mather leaves the line. 70 miles an hour through the speed trap, the quickest we've seen in this class on the second runs. And so Cressy stops the clock on 56.29. So what can Justin Mather do? He's still got a couple of seconds to make up on class leader David Dyson, so 47.06 the target. Might be difficult to get close to that. Michael Brown, meanwhile, is next with the Porsche 944. And Justin Mather, uh, he's got a pass up time, it's 48.98 for Justin Mather. Just four hundredths of a second outside his first run time. So Michael Brown in the 944 is followed by Andy Fagan with the Porsche Boxster. Well, he was second after the first run, so he could challenge uh, David Dyson. But he's still got to find almost a couple of seconds. 47.06 is the target. And Michael Brown, 52.18. So here's Andy Fagan, second in the class at the moment. And it's a 49.55, which is a slower time for Andy Fagan, so he's going to stay in second place. But right, in a couple of cars' time, in, we're going to see um, David Dyson. We've got Carl Lupton and Peter Taylor on the hill now. Carl Lupton with a 944. It's about to cross the line. He does in 49.63. So Peter Taylor with the box to follows him up. Now it's Dyson on the hill. Again, 70 miles an hour. Same speed through the trap as Justin Mather. But Mather is going to be third. Dyson leads with the 4706. It looks as though he's got the class in the bag. Find more time perhaps on the second run. Uh, Nick Wadsworth, final runner in the class, sets off. Peter Taylor's time 53 3 2. And for David Dyson, it's a 47 6 2. Another 47, which was. Uh, it's a 47 on his first run, but he's won the class with that 47.06 from Andy Fagan and Justin Mather. So just running through 
A couple more cars now. We've not seen Laura Wardle or Jonathan Williamson in the invitation class yet. Thought we would have seen at least one of them, but we've got Nick Wadsworth over the line with 50.91. So if we don't see the 911 of Nora Wall and Jonathan Williamson, that will be the end of the class runs and the final business of the day will be round 12 of the Wind Development's Top 10 Challenge. So the front runners from, this, for early, from earlier this afternoon missing though. Yes, and, uh, problems yeah. for, for a, an unspecified nature for Robert Kendrick, who stopped just out of our sight, and Sean Gould can't get the Gould started, unfortunately. After winning the first runoff, setting fastest time of the day, which may well stand, 36.72. Is currently that FTD set by Sean Gould. So we can give you the running order for the second of our top 12 runoffs, the Wind Development's Top 10 Challenge. Again, if you'd like to turn to page 35 in your programs, you can fill in the grid there. We'll rattle through them fairly quickly because we guess we'll be starting the runoff fairly soon. The car of the course is already on the hill. First to go is going to be 164, Bernie Kevill, 963. Mark Coley, 9-1-1, Tim Davis, 1-8-0, Stuart Ridge, 1-2-2, Kelvin Broad, 9-6-4, Simon Andrews, 1-2-1, Pete Tatham, 163, Andy Coley, 786, Chris Aspinall, 903, David Warburton, 902, Matthew Ryder, and Finally, 106, top qualifier, Zach Zamet.
So a car on the line. It ought to be Bernie Kevill. Oh, and everybody takes their run. Qualified 10th on 4181. Yeah. The Suzuki V8 powered Hermes 28. It's a 2.21 launch. So the start must be fairly reasonable. 83 miles an hour through the speed track for and Bernie Kevill. And at it Taurus, it's 12.64, sets the mark for the others. He's already out of pardon and heading through midway now. Which he hits on 25.77. So coming up now into semicircle, disappearing around the right-hander out of our side to set the first time in round 12 and it's 41.54 for Bernie Kevill. <laughs> Next up Mark Coley, eighth fastest qualifier on the 41.34. His brother Andy qualified fifth, just about a second quicker. So here's Mark Coley with the GR55. Gould, which uh, he and uh, Andrew have been campaigning for many, many years now. It's always run that Cosworth uh, 36 engine, and it's 2.37 launch for Mark Coley, and through the speed trap under the bridge at 91 miles an hour. Exit, exit, it Torres. Time there to 12.65, so one one hundredth slower than Bernie Kevill at that point. And 26.17, four tenths slower than Kevill, who set a 41.54. So that's the time to beat for Mark Coley, and it's 41.48. He goes into first place. Tim Davis now with the two litre four cylinder Millington powered pill beam MP88. Just got it in on 12th place in qualifying on 42.02. So, so, so shows the difference in conditions. Uh, cuts 40.31 and Tim Davis launches in a 2.21, exactly the same as Kevill. And 91 miles an hour, same speed as Coley. And into a tourist, the Millington engine sounding particularly sharp, that uh, four cylinder engine note. And it's a 12.64, so bang on the same time as Bernie Kevill. So he'll be looking for a mid 25 at least on this run to the split. Yes, 25.58, that is quickest so far. And he's out of the S's and into semicircle. So for a couple of seconds all he can see is sky and he's over the finish. In 40.44 to take the lead. And here's Stuart Ridge. Certainly the uh, oldest car in the runoff. This um, car which was built originally for five times British Hill Climb champion Martin Griffiths. And it dates back uh, to 1982. The heyday of the building parts. The very first MP53 chassis. Good launch, 2.13 and 85 miles an hour through the speed track. He's into a Taurus. We'll see a comparison time any moment now, which is 12.5. So he's on the pace and the quickest of the four so far. Long time sprinter Stuart Ridge. And it's 25.14, fastest time to the split so far. At midway. And he's around the exit. And into semi and finishes. 40.43, that shades out Tim Davis by one hundredth of a second to take the lead. And at least, at least two points in the bag for Stewart. 
Yes, uh, he will finish certainly no lower than ninth in the runoff. So we're happy with uh, Kirby Broad in the Force TA Suzuki supercharged car. Ninth fastest qualifier on 41.46, 90 mile an hour through the track. Slid the car around Orchard exit a wee bit and he's down the slope out of Itoris through the speed trap there which is 12.48 so he's the quickest so far at that point by point zero two. And he's 25.57 just a hundredth quicker than Tim Davis to the midway split. And he's coming up towards semi now around the broad bend and up to the finish right now. 40.75, so third place for Stuart Broad. Kelvin Broad, apologies. Thinking of the cricketer. You were, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, Kel this, this Kelvin. Oh, we, ju we just had Stuart Ridge, that was the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> you merged them together. <laughs> Great. Right, next up will be Simon Andrews. Well, Simon Andrews, uh, well, it has to be because they go run in order. So uh, a rapid changeover of a uh, driver's seat. A bit of a slight difference in height between them, so I think they have a pair of those um, uh, moulded foam seat cushions that you make at home in a black bin bag. Sit in the bin bag and pour the stuff in and it expands around you. I've ruined many a set of race overalls <laughs> How bad? with those. Uh, seventh fastest qualifier, Simon Andrews, on a 40.8 Three. Yeah, for those bags you need some. Yes, oh. you do need a strong bag. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Just spend the money by the quality. Right, somebody coming to the line. It will be Simon Andrews. It does sound like that uh, that musical musical note you get from these Terry Davis engines, whether it's the Suzuki based or the Yamaha based. This is the first one that Terry built which was the only Suzuki one, in fact, all the others are Yamahas, and uh, he ran in his Raynard season. So Simon Andrews away from the line, 2.26 launch and the speed track, 92 miles an hour. That's the quickest we've seen so far in this runoff. Let's have a look at his split as he goes down out of Vitoris through the trap there, and it's a 12.22, yeah, he's easily the quickest so far. So 25.14 is the quickest midway time we've seen. And it's 25.35, that's second quickest to the midway split. So uh, on a par with Stuart Ridge, who still leads in that uh, vintage pill beam, 40.43 is the time to beat. So out of semi and through the finish in the time. 40.86, so fourth place for Simon Andrews. Started so well, didn't finish quite as well as he would have hoped. So after Simon, this will be Pete Tatham now, if we go according to program and everybody takes their runs. Qualified on a 40.77 in the OMS 25. Pete Tatham, next up. Narrowly missed FTD yesterday. Unfortunately, uh, Spun at Itoris in the first runoff after qualifying seventh. He qualified sixth this afternoon on a 40.77, so he'll be looking to make amends for that with the ex Andrew Macbeth supercharged OMS Suzuki. And it should be a good launch, which it is 2.24, and through the speed trap of the blown car, 99 miles an hour. That's the fastest we've seen by some margin this afternoon. We'll see his. Uh the tour is exit time any moment now, which is 11.95, so the first one under 12. And I think well, he was uh, in not quite a... in the right gear out of Baden. Well, he may not get a 24, no, but it's still the quickest split. 25 seconds exactly for Pete Tatham, so he's on course to take the lead. Despite that slight moment at Pardon. Oh, tyre noise as he goes around, semicircle and through the finish now. He's into the 39s, fastest so far, 39.87. Andy Coney now, qualified fifth with a 40.45. His brother Mark is currently in sixth place in the runoff. And you 
course driving that. Um, Hear the engine running. V6 Cosworth Power Gould. That engine first appeared on the hill climb scene in um, double hill climb champion. Graham White Jr. in uh, 19 uh, in 2001. That was the first year he won. He won two successive years, 2001, 2002. It was a new engine on the hills, way back in those days, and uh, still used today. Of course, um, Alex Summers, currently second overall in the British Championship, runs one of those engines in his uh, Firehawk, which we saw early uh, today in the hands of his running back. Cody launches the Gould Yarmouth to 2.4 seconds and through the speed track 98 miles an hour, just one mile an hour slow in the Tatham. And here is Andy Cody going through the tourist trap at in the time of 12.49, so a bit slower. In fact, slower than Calvin Broad. But it's 25.14, which is exactly the same time as Stuart Ridge, in fact. Second quickest to the midway split. So the time to beat is 39.87 from Pete Tatham. And, well, he's there, 39.74, new leader, Andy Coley. He made it up later on the hill. Great performance of that. So now it's Chris Aspinall who qualified the Empire Wraith in fourth place with a 39.45. First of the sub 40 qualifiers. 39.74 though. Run off, so you know he could do the time. It's 90 miles an hour through the track for Chris Aspinall. Yeah, he's around his tourist. About a quarter of the way into his run, and it's a 11.85, so well under the 12 there. Quickest so far at that, uh, that on this run. So looking for a low 25, it's better than that. It's 24.95, the first 24 to the split. So Chris Aspinall looking to head off Andy Coley, 39.74, currently the time to beat. And Chris Aspinall, 39.28, so the time's coming down and down, 39.28. Fastest qualifying time for this runoff was Zach Zamet's 38.56. So we would expect 38 second runs. I think uh, Sean Gould's 36.72 FTD is going to be a little bit out of reach. But David Warburton, the next one on the hill, third fastest qualifier with a 38.79 in the X Works 1600cc Gould Suzuki. <laughs> Launch control very evident on the Warburton car. 99 miles an hour through the trap again equals Pete Tatham's um, previous fastest time. Wide entrance to the tourist and he posts the time there of 11.53. So he's the quickest now. So the can, he, can he get into the 24s? He should be able to. Yes, 24.44. Four. Half a second quicker than anybody else so far. So can he do that? On the elapsed time, 39.28 to beat. Can he get into the 38s? And he's around the semicircle and up to the finish now. 38.54 for David Warburton. So that has put the pressure on Matt Ryder and Zach Zamet. And Zamet's qualifying time was 200 slower than the time we just seen from Dave Warburton. So both of them have got to raise their game in the runoff to get into the low 38s if they want to beat David Warburton's 38.54 and Matthew Ryder, yes it's his FTD man, is the first to try. He qualified second on the 38.64. Uh, he's got to find 
at least another quarter of a second or so because that Zamit is going to be breathing down his neck as the final runner in a few moments time but first of all Matt Ryder with the Empire Evo 2 long nose 1600cc machine built by Chaplin 2.17, that's a uh, very good launch, one of the best we've seen, 95 miles an hour through the track. Rockets into Itoris, nice tight line around the inside there, and he's down through the speed trap in the time of 12.05, not as quick as two previous runners. Well, he'll be looking for a low 24. Well, it's a 24, but it's 24.83. Quite the pace of the earlier runners. Time to beat is still 38.54 from David Warburton. And he's not quite done it. 38.63, that's second place for Matt Ryder. Just the final runners to come, Zach Zamet, our Maltese hot shot. Again, he's got to find some time, some improvement over his qualifying time which was just two hundredths slower than the current runoff leader, Dave Warburton. This is the final runner. As Eddie said, Zach Zamet, 38.54 to beat for the former Maltese hill climb champion. He's away from the start. It's 2.2, .2, not as quick as uh, Ryder, but quicker than Warburton. Right three miles an hour through the track. Paul, the man with the uh, another of his empires, but the later Empire Wraith model, and through the tourist trap in a 12.15. So will this be a low 24? It's going to need to be to get on terms. Well, 24.74, quicker than Ryder, but the all-important elapsed time we're now looking for. It's got to be a 38.54 to beat. Well, it's around the semi, Jerry. And it's 38.83 for Zach Zamet. So that puts him into third place, 38.83. So that means the win goes. The win goes to Dave Warburton on 38.54 in second place, Matt Ryder, 38.83. 6-3, third, Zach Zamet, 38-8-3, fourth, Chris Aspinall, 39-2-8, fifth, Andy Coley, 39-7-4, sixth, Pete Tatham, 39-8-7, seventh, Stuart Ridge, 40.43, in eighth place, Tim Davis, 40.44, ninth is Kelvin Broad, 40.75, 10th, Simon Andrews, 40.86. 11th, just out of the points, Mark Coley, 41.48. And 12th on 41.54, Bernie Kevill.